the Thinking Tackle podcast. Man doth heed the water's cry. With lines and hooks and rods they try. The seas, the rivers, the lakes they bait to catch the beasts who lie in wait. Across that water and into Europe, fish are our dreams, Neil. Get a bit of line and he's furious at you. Oh, come on, please be a big one. There are carp in here bigger than we've ever played. That is why we come to places like this. It is so special. That is what you call a good start. It's more of a relief than anything, if I'm honest. Absolutely strips me though. None of the other fish have done that. Proper, proper carpet. Is that nothing? Nothing! <laughs> this is the kind of fish we're dreaming of catching. <laughs> what a day! That feeling will never get boring, will it? No. We've got to get going then. We should do, really. Welcome to the Thinking Tackle podcast. Now, today I'm joined in the studio by two guys who need absolutely no introduction from me whatsoever. However, it is Tom Dove and Neil Spooner, the stars of Monster Carp Season 7, their very first as a duo. Now, they're going to talk today about not only what you guys can expect from the series, but also quite a bit about what happened behind the scenes. So, with no further ado, I hope you enjoy the show. Tom Dove, Neil Spooner. It seems slightly odd to be welcoming you to the place that you work, but welcome to the podcast. <laughs> you welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks, well, thanks, sure. thanks, guys. This is this is only my second day of recording, so. Now, but when this comes out, we are literally going to be days away from the launch of yeah. uh, what has probably been a big part of your lives for the last couple of years. Well, More. well, th- this series obviously the last year, but the show in general, like seven years. Yeah, seven years. I only got one series seven, yeah. Season one. So. so we're talking Monster Carp. Yep. Um, which is, you know, rapidly become the biggest fishing show on telly, I think. Seems that way from the outside anyway. Cool. I, I think um the Mortimer and White House one on, on BBC gets much Which we which you know we love. Yeah. I, mean, I, I love yeah, it, absolutely. yeah, yeah. I really do. Uh, and interestingly, it couldn't be more different. You know, the pacing of yours is vastly different, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Um now there is uh, one major change to this season, isn't there? Mm. My uh, hairline. <laughs> two, two. I didn't even have to say No, because I thought you were going to say so I jumped in with it. <laughs> okay, you're talking about Ali, maybe? Yeah, the, 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 the second major change is that you are now a duo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, give us your thoughts on how that felt, rocking up to that first shoot. Yeah. Without Ali. It was... It, it, I think it, it was daunting. It, it was really daunting. You know, Ali's such a force of nature, isn't he? That um, he, he took control of every situation, which is a good thing on, on one side and sometimes a bad thing for people that are involved. But it means that everything was getting done and he was he was the person that got it done in the first place yeah. as well. So he was a, like a really good shield, you know? Like we, we, I never really used to think about it. You used to turn up with a fishing kit, fish for the week come back see some of the edits and then it go on tv but obviously now without ali there it's very very different um and we were we were nervous going to that first one weren't we but at heart but by the time a few days had gone by and we realized that we could do it on our own and there was no issues and actually it was really good um settled the nerves and we got on yeah. with it we didn't exactly make it easy for ourselves with the first venue we were going to either did no we? we didn't we didn't pick like a a commercial venue where a result was almost guaranteed. Uh, Dovi, I think one of the things that, that leaps out to me immediately is you're such a kind of calm and competent kind of guy. It feels mad that you would have nerves ahead of a shoot. Mad. Really? Yeah. I get really nervous for stuff. Really? Yeah. But Especially you don't show stuff. it. Mm, maybe I don't show it so much. I, I, actually, I don't think it's nerves. It's more like, um, well, when, 
uh, it wasn't even anxiety. It was more, um, I suppose it's pressure. It, when you lose somebody that's taking control and you have to step up into a role, it's like you want things to go well, don't you? So whatever that feeling is, I felt it, you know, first of all. But quickly you realise that you're good enough to do the job and you just get on with it. Hmm. And you also realise that most people don't know what they're doing in their job until you do it. That is the only way of finding out. And I've learned that from working here over the years. So it's just like you chuck yourself in and you get on with it. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the chemistry, mm. did you have to consider whether things would change? What would in in what way? Without Ali, because Ali is a, is a huge character. Yeah, was the dynamic between the th the three of you going to be transferred perfectly into into the two of you? Was your relationship going to be different? Did you do you consider how your relationship looks on telly? Yeah. I I was always very confident with that though because me gonna, and yeah. Neil genuinely are mates and not that we weren't with Al because we all were but going from three to two we have a laugh all of the time yeah. don't we and I knew actually yeah. that there was could, there was going to be more time to show that and that's a really good thing so that was actually the part that I well, I wasn't really worried about any of it but that was the part that I was really confident about I was going to say it's the one part that didn't have to consider no we as you just said we are mates we will rip it out of each other literally on a daily basis if i don't see him i'll still text him some abuse just so he knows i'm still there so when you get the chance for the, <laughs> when you get the chance for that to just be the two of you there wasn't a worry with that okay i mean let me take you back to the moment that that you had to consider possibly whether monster cart was even going to carry on yeah what what was that like what tell me about the process um from the moment you knew ali was leaving yeah pretty quickly your thoughts must have turned to like what is Corda's flagship show yeah how could it continue i mean we we were we, i was always part of that that um sort of communication with itv anyway and because we're friends with ali and ali wanted to leave on a on a, on a good note we made sure that the transition was really smooth so we made sure that everything was in line for me to take it over um i'd met the commissioner anyway before at itv parties um and we obviously know the crew really well because we've had the same crew forever. So it wasn't actually that much to change. It was more who makes the decisions from from then on. And because we'd been doing the show again for so many years, I you know we had thought about what we you know how you how we wanted the show and what we would do if if that sort of thing happened. So it wasn't um, there was never a moment where I thought, oh no, Monster Carp's not going to happen because we you know I'd, I'd spoke to Ali about it in depth and we we made sure that it was going to happen all the way through. I think it's really important then to clarify, given as for no um, moment of time did you think that it would go. So it therefore the question arises, what does it mean to Corda? Why is Monster Carp important? Mm. Well, there's a, there's a bigger conversation to be had about TV, I guess, at the moment, but no other fishing company have have, have got anything on TV and it does sort of legitimize the company it sort of puts a stamp of approval on you to say that you guys you, you do know what you're doing um and people love monster carp don't they they really have loved it forever so it's not yeah. like we it it, it well, it's really important to call her. Mm -hmm. it, it really is because no, nobody else is doing it and we're doing it really well so we're, we're ticking a box that nobody else is ticking you know and, and even sort of quarter aside I think it's important for the industry to see carp fishing or fishing on mainstream TV, whether you're using a, you know, a quarter end tackle or diver rod, whatever it might be, or somebody else's, just to, just the thought that there's going to be some people of all ages that are going to watch fish and think, oh, that looks fun. I'll never go at that. Mm. I think it's important for every, for everything. And do you know what you mentioned those, those sort of brand stuff. Uh, I've, I've been lucky enough to see uh, three of the shows and it, that doesn't come across. Like there is no, it's the least sort of in your face stuff, I think. Oh, absolutely. Is that conscious? Um, oh, sorry, how much do you have to consider the commercial implications of having a show on telly? Yeah, I mean, we're, well, first of all, it's got to go through an ITV commissioner. So there's there's no way that you can just throw product down people's necks or be so technical, obviously, that it becomes just a carp fishing show. We're really clear. It's really clear to us that we're going to have monster carp that's just fishing in general 
and then people are going to enjoy watching that show. And if they want to carp fish, there is so much material of us online that <coughs> if they want technical stuff or they want to understand what products we do, they can go to YouTube and find out. It doesn't, not everything we do needs to be really product heavy. So mm. we're, we're re really keen for that not to be like that. And it's the same as this podcast. We set this podcast out to make sure that it wasn't a technical piece that people could just sit down and listen to a bit of carp fishing or watch carp fishing as far as once the carp goes and not not feel like they're being sold to because they're not mm. and and that's no. re that's really important because i'm a bit like that i don't want to watch stuff that's like i know what you i know what you're doing here like <laughs> i don't <laughs> i, I want to yeah i want to i just want to watch someone fishing or oh. i want to watch someone playing golf or you want to watch whatever not um not feeling like you're being sold to all the time i so. mean we're all savvy now aren't we as viewers mm. i don't think you can get away with those thinly veiled um no. No, technical bits of course i mean not. It, and, and uh, you know i'll say from the off I really enjoyed the shows. That's good. Um, I don't watch tons and tons of telly. Yeah. Uh, we're going to come on to the details of the shows. Um, we'll, we'll go through those pretty soon. Um, but in terms of the the thing that makes Monster Carp Monster Carp, before we move on to the specifics, it'd be great for you guys to spell out what what it is. Like, basically, what are the things that make Monster Carp Monster Carp? Hmm. Great question. What are the core? What's the core values, if you like, of that show? Okay. I, I think it's changed slightly because it's me and Neil now. Obviously, it's changed as well. Like you're asking a question about you talking about this series in general, or just. Well, I suppose that's an interesting one. For Has it changed? And if so, how? But w what things have you retained from the, those original shows? Yeah. Okay. I, th I think in the past the shows have. Um, sort of the hook of the show, if you like, was us always trying to catch a bigger and bigger fish throughout the show. Um, but because there were three of us, that, that worked pretty well because we were sort of, there was a bit of banter between us and it was always, what you know, what's next? Try and catch a 40, then a 50, then a 60. And it worked really well. The pace of the show was good. But because there, now there's two of us, we've still got that camaraderie there, but also it's, um, it's not so much about a target. It's not we're going to this lake to try and catch a 50 or 60 pounder. One of the shows is like that because we go to Euroacqua and we're going to try and catch a world record. But in general, it's more just showing the ess essence of fishing, going there, have a really good time with your friend, a bit of adventure, um, a week's fishing and, and enjoying yourself and just relaying that really well over, over the film. Anything to add on that, Neil? No, I think that's exactly right. It, it, it's um, when, when I was a kid, I never, never cared how big the fish were. I, could, I always wanted to catch the most against me mates. That I've always been a bit competitive. I don't know if it shines through. Um, <laughs> but even now, when I go carp fishing, you know, if I was to leave here and go and do an overnighter, if I left with three fish and they were all doubles, I'd be just as happy as if I'd have had perhaps one big. And I, I don't really care, sorry, I don't really care how big the carp are I catch. Mm. And it felt that Monster Carp under the, uh, you know, the, the previous series, we'd worked our way higher and higher. And I think you run the, you run the danger if you keep following that um, that that guideline. You're going to run out of venues that you can go to to be able to keep increasing that target. So we felt it was important to bring it back down, almost back down to basics, and just enjoy the adventure, enjoy the journey. Go and fishing with your mate, same as anyone watching it would do. Take a trip across the continent to a whatever venue in France, wherever it might be. Just enjoy whatever you catch. Obviously, if a big one turns up, brilliant. If it doesn't, we still have a good trip. And, and that shines through. I, I must say that you guys, you can't manufacture the, the chemistry that you have, I don't think. It seems credible to me mm. as a, as a you know, neutral viewer that it's real. Yeah. yeah. Well, we do love and hate each other. Yeah. Which is perfect, he's, he's right? He's really annoying to be around, but also really funny at some stage. <laughs> sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> because it, it, ultimately, guys, like acting on TV isn't great is it you want it to be <laughs> no, credible no. and real yeah, and yeah, not, yeah it looks crap doesn't it if you're it does yeah it's, it looks just forced and yeah. horrible but you have a way between you of making these scenes which are obviously fabricated mm. you know these are these are scenes that you guys are thinking about as a crew mm. and pulling off um and yet they seem credible to me yeah i think we we've got a well we've got a natural relationship obviously but also we've got used to being in front of the camera and the longer you're in front of the camera, the more you can actually be yourself. And because now we're in charge of what actually gets said and gets done, if the, if an idea floats around and it sort of seems like that's going to be eggy, that I'm not, not we're not doing it. 
you know like yeah, we'll, we'll, as simple as we'll, that if if we if we can <clears throat> sit down and do a scene where we're going to mean what we say and we can have a laugh doing it then we'll do it um and and any, anything that doesn't come across very well it gets left on the edit room floor you know it doesn't go in so mm. um i think it's far more natural now and we sort of know ourselves a little bit better on camera and i know what we want out of the show as well so I mean, there's a couple of scenes that we're going to talk about because I absolutely loved them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but or, or themes as well as scenes. Yeah. There are themes within these shows. Do you think there? this one's funnier than than normal? Because I I, I, have re I don't know if it's because it's more our sense of humour, but it, during the edits, I've been pissing myself laughing at yeah. it. It's <laughs> really I, quite funny. I have a, like an almost pathological inability to laugh at things. Right. Uh, but but, <laughs> uh, but I did... I did find several moments, yeah, really, which means that laughing. most of it will be funny to, to yeah. You know, that's good. That's yeah. good to hear. Um, Why can't you laugh at? Things? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> quite an issue. Are you all right? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not. I don't know. No. It's like um, what, you, if, if you I went to, st to an evening of stand-up, I'd find it cripplingly embarrassing that I couldn't laugh at it. I don't know. Oh it's like a, it's God. like a tension. Well, is it like um, is it like a? Do you, I hate it when somebody shows you a video that's on their the phone and they say, "Oh, this is, this really, is really funny," and then you're like, "Oh, that's, I can, that's I can feel that me. pressure to laugh." That's 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 just like a bigger version. Stand up is like a huge version of that. Yeah, but you don't. But if you're watching it on your own, you don't feel the pressure, surely? Or do you? I don't know. I I I mean, I've been to stand up like twice ever, and it's always been with other people. It's right. a social thing. All oh, right. Well, but do you not find anyone funny on like you? Do you what about Sean Locke? Did you find him funny? I've never seen anything from Sean. Oh, Locke. oh God. right. Let's move well, on. You can still. You can. No wonder you haven't. Laughed. <laughs> You're not finding anyone so, funny. No, no, this is the point, though. I, I'm virgin territory for that. So, oh, good it, point. Because yeah. it's good, you know. We'll, uh, we'll show you on a video yeah, in a minute. Exactly. You have to laugh. <laughs> yeah, if you don't, <laughs> we won't. Yeah. Um, I want to take us back to the to the inception of these shows. Like, I'll, I'll give people a real insight into how it all starts because these are are huge undertakings, aren't they? Yeah. I'd like to maybe get a flavour of just how big a logistical project these are. Um, does it start with a piece of paper? There's no paper. <laughs> no, we don't write things down. No, it's all chat. Because we're, we're with each other all of the time. And um, and like we said, the crew's been there for such mm. a long time. It is much easier now to pull it all together than it was before. And we've got Gary Newman, who's... Who, who's the oracle, Who's he? the oracle. He, he runs the project, really, of organising flights and times and dates. So, so, what so at me for when what, you said what, dates? What, you know what's yeah. happening with the dates. <laughs> but take me, take me back before that. So... You you say you speak to each other all the time, as in the, you guys are where the series comes from initially. Are you the first point of? Are you, are you uh, going back to series one, episode no, one? I'm, right, I'm talking this, about this series. Okay. Let's say let's take this series. Yep. I want to know before you've got any venues on the on the piece on you know in your heads. Yeah, how do the conversations go? Mm -hmm. What is considered when it when it comes to venues? Because mm -hmm. you've got a real mix in this series. It's fair to say. Yeah, yeah. And how do you then go about? recruiting everyone for the series making sure that, that like maybe the logistics are right making mm -hmm. sure the venues are even doable because yeah. it's a lot of money right so you don't want to waste it yeah it's an awful lot of money we, mm. we spend we spend more and more now than we ever have done um oh i think we've but, there's a whatsapp group obviously in place which, there were, there's about 20 whatsapp yeah. groups we, we know we, we know really that we need four different types of venues really we need a couple that are adventurous one of which a possibility of a real big one and then the same with sort of a commercial places which is what we've done this year can't have them all the same um and we'll have a backlog of ideas of venues that we feel like that we want to go to and then it depends whether it works out on dates for them venues whether it's good time to go there or not and it's just a constant conversation that we're having do you think we should go park should we go there should we go and do this i don't know let's figure out a bit more about that gary will go there and test fish them sometimes um and we've got just because we've got salesmen on the road throughout Europe as well, we get lots of information from people. We've got really solid contacts in quite a few of the countries as well, particularly like Croatia, that sort of way. We've got yeah, such good contacts there that we could ring it. If, if something fell through, we could ring him and say, we need a venue next week. We're all booked in. We need to go. And he'll have something ready. The, the interesting thing for me is, um, before we move back onto what perhaps is the next phase in that, is that most of this is quite unrelatable to the guys who are going to be watching it because you're going to get on telly everyone from the guy with the with the float rod and the ledger rod out on mm. the pod at the same time right them up to guys who might well want to go and fish mm. these, these enormous waters but most of them won't um the yeah. wilder stuff the adventure stuff yeah how important is is the the story in that case because when you think that people perhaps aren't going to go to salagoo mm. um that just telling a great story that people are going to enjoy yeah 
Is, is that sort of principle in your mind? Yeah, it's just two mates going fishing no matter where it is. But I, 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 I like to watch things on TV that I, that, that I aspire to do, not necessarily, you know, going to fish linear fisheries, you know, and I love going to do that as well. But we've got loads of other videos doing that. So I think it's a bit of an aspirational piece that somebody can watch and think, oh dear, one day me and Dave can go and do that. So when, when you've got these venues down, um, is, it, is it a constant rolling process or do you just book it all out and that's it they're the dates and that's when you're going um what for each show yes do you, no, do you book the whole season oh no no no. we we book we book one at a time really yeah whatever's whatever's coming up we'll book i mean the one that we're doing we, we're going to croatia in um at, back end of july yeah we've only really just sorted that out haven't we yeah two weeks ago yeah, uh, three two weeks, weeks ago, ago it might have been fine in fact it was when we were in euro Aqua, wasn't it yeah it i mean we finally we, nailed down we, we we block out the we block out the times with the crew so we've got a um, lot of freelancers that work on. There's probably 10 to 15 people, depending on where we're going. Um, and probably two thirds of them are freelance. So at the beginning of the year, we block out the time with them. We'll say between July the 15th and the 30th, we're filming. Same, we try and book more at the end of the year because we want to be fishing in the autumn between these dates and these dates and these dates. Um, and then we'll just fit the venues in depending on you know how good they are going to be at that time of year and in terms of picking the crew guys these are people you've got to know very well mm -hmm. you've probably made changes is this a crew now that you're seeking to keep together and and why why do they fit with the monster carp shoot sort of ethos mm. I'll, I'll let you answer some because i'm just saying yeah no I, yeah we we've got uh we've got such a solid crew now and the reason that they are so solid is because that everyone knows their place everyone knows exactly what they're doing within the, the the monster cart boundaries, whether that's uh, whether that's Joe the sound man, whether that's Lewis Porter, who, who might have to be up all night filming, or one of you know uh, Lavis, wh whatever it is, whatever they're asked to do, there's no there's no issues with it. Everyone knows the the, the content that, that they've got to get, but I guess what's more important is that everyone gets on with everyone. There's no there's no bad blood in the camp. We sort of we succeed together. We not very often but we fail together as well without that it wouldn't be possible if you've got someone in camp that's not getting on with you know some, some of these guys they've like tom said they're freelancers and in some of these episodes they've had to camp sometimes for the first time ever they're sleeping outside under the stars with us um and if they weren't willing to be that flexible it, it just wouldn't work so these guys, uh, there's an element of buy-in. They're not mercenaries. These guys want to see Monster Carp succeed. Absolutely. A hundred percent they do, yeah. Especially now as well, because when, when Ali left as well, you know what it's like when, when a big character leaves. Everyone's got to pull together and make sure that um, that something that does well. And um, I, I've, I've got it more, it's, it's much more of an open forum now with ideas. And because if, if everyone has a bit of an idea to chuck onto the table, they feel like they've, you know, they feel like they've got some buy into it and they yeah. want it to succeed. So um, because everyone's more of a part of it now with decision-making day-to-day when you're on shoot or even beforehand, they feel like it's partly their show and it is. Mm. And, uh, and, and everyone gets on because of that, I think. I mean, are you guys effectively producing? Are you, are you, are you where the book stops now? Yeah. Yeah. So big decisions, bilateral decisions, made by between the two of you or yeah i mean i'm i actually am in the executive yeah. producer role but at the same time it's always a conversation i think yeah it, it yeah tom's taken on far yeah. more from the the um the editing process has, than i have has that meant a change of job for you Davy? like the fact this is obviously huge now and you, oh you, yeah you were my, my job's so different to what it was before <laughs> it's like so so different it's much it's but i'm much much better i love it because we're doing lots of different things instead of just doing products which i, I still love doing but Thomas Pashu does product now. He's so good at it. You literally don't need to do anything for it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's so organised. He's doing such great product. It's given me time to 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 go and do this all the time, and um, I, I love being part of the whole edit process as well with new director. Um, and yeah, my my job's now looking after people, making sure the group's good, uh, and making the right decisions early on so there's no issues later on mm. in any project we do it allows you to focus more whilst we're actually filming as well because mm. historically when you know go back to our previous roles within the company you, you're constantly living on your phone during the day fighting emails sorting bits out and you you know your mind can wander a bit mm -hmm. now when we go there you know it's it's fully focused on what we're trying to achieve and i think better things happen because of it mm. okay um sorry guys what was one thing i want to know what was the initial um 
like public reaction to Ali's departure? Did you get a lot of messages on social media where people still get them now? You still get them now. Were yeah. people upset? Did people think it was going to end? Did, did, you know, what were, what, were, what were kind of what were the questions that people were throwing at you? Yeah, is Monster Carp was that carrying the, on? Was that, that was the, main the one? yeah that you still get it now. Yeah, still yeah. Well, I mean, we haven't actually pushed it. Uh, the idea was is that we're going to tell more people about it just before the series goes yeah. online because s things are so far away now that if you put something on and it's like three months time people forget about it so yeah, we haven't actually shouted it from the rooftops just yet well we, you will have actually by the time this comes out <laughs> yeah. um but but whilst we're recording this we hadn't done so there's lots of lots of people that still don't really know unless they follow us closely whether the show is going to happen or not um yeah you get a lot of people you can even when it goes out, you're going to have people that don't like it because Ali's in it and you're going to have people that like it more because Ali's not in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that is just the way the world works. And that'd be the same if either, if either of us were the people. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, people got... have their favourites. So, you'll, you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll get a bit of both sides of it. But I think um, I think people that love monster carp and love carp fishing are still excited about it and looking forward to it coming out. I think probably um, the fact you're such an established TV show now mm. means that shouting it from the rooftops is... It doesn't need to be done over a, such a long period mm. either. Like the, you've got presumably quite an established audience, and the guys that you aren't reaching, perhaps are, the, are your general course anglers who might just flick onto it anyway because they find it through other means. I yeah. I'm not really sure, but but it does seem like hopefully you can drag in people from way off the kind of target market. Yeah, because it's telly. Yeah, that's the that is the hard thing to do. We we are we are going fishing with a few sort of celebrities, if you're not celebrities, but like people that are known on YouTube. Um, that are outside of fishing to try and get a different audience. But, you know, like you said, we've got a really, really strong audience, but we are only talking to the fishing industry. So um, we, I think we almost, not, we don't max out, but we talk to pretty much yeah. everyone in fishing, I think. So, um, yeah, the, 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 the hardest thing was to, to get outside yeah, of that because to other people. You, you know, we all want it to work outside of fishing mm. we all want your investment to be to be justified and, mm. and, and revisited time and again inside the industry don't we yeah well it helps everyone doesn't it yeah it just does like yeah. i said it's important for the industry mm. not not just for us Let, let's talk specifics guys because um i think the the, the series kicks off with a visit to a, a, another historic mm. french lake and the lake i first heard about way way back like 90s probably yeah realistic it's been fished and it's been a big deal since then yeah um, give us a little bit of an insight into how you chose to go to Salagu. Mm. Salagu was actually on the list for a long time. Yeah. Well, so was, you know, well, Sal was part of it as well. It was always another one of those venues that I think we knew we'd get to eventually. But when we were booking the other trips down in that part of the world, it was, you know, Cassian was first, then it was Car Says, mm. and Salagu, if you like, was the one we hadn't done yet. Uh, and because there isn't as many big fish in there now. So, like, the reality was that when Al was here, we were trying to catch bigger and bigger fish. Mm. And we did that really well. Like the last series uh, in France um, before Al left, I think we caught 60 pounders in every show. No, 70 pounders. 70 pounders in three of the yeah. shows. And the thought of going to Salagou to try and catch a 60 pounder is like it was, we, we, you weren't going to do it. So it's like, are we really going to go somewhere where the biggest we could possibly catch, even if we do really well, is a 50 pounder? Um, we, we weren't willing to take the risk, but now we're willing to take the risk. And actually we ended up catching a 60 pounder anyway, or Neil did. So um, it made it even better because it was so hard to try and do it. That, um, you know, amazing lake in general. And then that fish you caught was just unreal. It, it, yeah, it, it's another one of them. I've, I have been lucky enough. We've both been lucky enough to catch some, some ridiculous carp over the years, but it was another one to add to that list. We really didn't go there expecting it to happen. Talk to us about the the challenges that we see you guys face on screen, but also perhaps what was going on in the background mm. uh, during that. <laughs> <laughs> Sadako is so difficult. It's like you're you're basically fishing on like the busiest beach in the world. Yeah, it's like yeah. there's kite surfers going past like thirty yards from the bank. You're obviously fishing braided main lines, so they're just like constantly mm. taking you out there's swimmers there's swim yeah. Yeah, look we're, 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 we're fishing here we're in a beach here. we are in a beach <laughs> and it's, it's like you, you might say well go and go and fish somewhere else but it's most of it's like that and this is just a really good area for the fish so um yeah it was very shallow just, water wasn't it weedy carp were there you, you had to be there yeah um, and and your, your boat fishing as well so it's like 
you, well, you know what it's like putting one rod out with a boat takes ages doesn't it so can you imagine putting the rod out putting your second one out put, and then putting the third rod by the time you get back your first one's been taken out and then you're going back out and then you lift up into it and a kite server cuts the line and you're like what are we <laughs> re-spool redo it get it back out there and then hopefully by the time the sun sets there's less people there and you can actually catch a carp it's like it was carnage it does, was... <laughs> does it feel easier to, to to grit your teeth and carry on when when there's a film shoot at stake rather than just slinging your rod up the bushes like you might do if it was, just, if it was you, you there on your own. Well, you've certainly got more motivation to yeah. get it right. Um, well, Neil doesn't really need any more motivation. He keeps getting the rods out no matter what anyway. But uh, You say he, that though. You say that right. But going back to going back to Morocco, so season two, I think went to Morocco. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the first episode. Dovey might not even remember this, but we were in very different parts of the lake. We weren't far away from each other. Dovey had a big standard, a plateau he was fishing out to, and I was fishing this kind of bay. And I'd had an absolute nightmare one night in that I'd been out in a boat to play a fish in. I'd landed it, gone back in, gone to take the rig back out. My markers disappeared. So right there and then, I didn't want to do anything other than crawl. I was soaked to the skin. I, I just wanted to get into my bed and wait till morning. And Dovey come over because he just had a fish. And he said to me, um, what are you doing? I said, oh, I've done this, this, that, and the other. I might leave it till the morning. And he's like, no. He goes, there are thousands of people, thousands of carp anglers that would give everything to be in the position we're in now. We've got to get your rod back out. And that has stuck with me the whole time. So when you're getting your rod taken out every half hour, an hour, and you know that to get that rod back out, it's going to take another hour. It's just second. It doesn't enter my head to not do it because the result is far more important than me or us having a tantrum. It's an interesting <laughs> it's one. It, yeah, you you guys, ha, do, you, do you think you've got some of the best jobs in fishing? You must have, right? Yeah, we've got Not some jobs. of, we have the I best genuinely jobs, think yeah. I've got the best, yeah, we've got the best We've job. got the best jobs in the best company. Yeah. yeah. No, we, no doubt in my and mind. And you have to, you know, there are times when you can use that as fuel. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. You can't, how, how could we possibly moan about anything in our lives? Yeah. Seriously, I do, I do think about it a lot. We've got we've got amazing jobs. We haven't got we haven't got any dickheads above us that are like pressurising you to do stuff all of the time. Dan wants you to fish more if you possibly can. We get paid good wages. We've got lovely families. It's like what else do you want? Incredibly how, understanding. How, how could families. you possibly moan? And, and the thing is as well, if you moan about stuff like that in front of people, and other people are like, "You're taking the piss." Mm. Like, how could you possibly yeah. moan? It's just like it's not. Um, it, it it doesn't enter your mind. But that's not to say there's not the opportunities to moan because these shoots must be incredible roller coasters in terms of that. You know what goes wrong as much as what goes right. Yeah, you're under pressure. You're there for a long time. You're away from your family a long time. Um, but it's, G it's, given as you're <laughs> it's, it's all good. Given as you're now sort of holding the purse strings for the shoot as well, Tom, Yeah, does that is that extra pressure for you? Yeah, it is. I, I don't really feel that pressure though. I just always feel like if, you, if you're going to go there and work hard, do the best you possibly can, and do everything for the right reason. No one's ever going to moan at you, and nobody's ever moaned at me mm. because I've always done that here all the way through, and so yeah. a spooner. So it's like I haven't got that. I haven't got a guilt of not trying hard enough, or I haven't got a guilt of um, doing things for the wrong reason. I've just always do it for the reason I feel like it, you know is right, and that serves you well all the way through. I think. Yeah. Um, in terms of production, before we jump back to Saligo, I just want to ask this quickly things are probably a bit more congested because you, you know you do fantastic content on youtube mm -hmm. uh which you throw a, a lot of budget at presumably and the production levels are as high as they've ever been mm -hmm. and i think you could probably say that that for quite a few outfits how do you make the telly even better and is that going to be tougher as you go forward yeah i think so i mean it's it's getting tougher now because the the, the t itv and all of the tv companies even the bbc they're making cuts on spend and we obviously understand that it's a branding exercise for us so we want it the best we possibly it can possibly be so what's happening is is that they're spending less money and we're spending more and more money and in that that obviously gets to a, a point where it's like it's a tipping point it's like is it is it worth spending this large amount of money on you know do, do, is, do you see a return to it so I, I think we're at the max we can possibly spend but I also think we've got a really, really good show. Mm. So you, you can you can make it better by um, 
us getting better in front of the camera, going to better venues, but we can't make it better by spending any more money anymore. No, no, it's um, we're we're maxed out. And and the, to be fair, the locations must be critical for the way it looks. Yeah, they really are. I mean, the the, the film crew are so good; they can make anywhere look nice. You know, even, even that is true, though. I mean, you guys are good, aren't you? You you, you with topography as well. Every, every you you manage to make yeah. make them look beautiful. These lakes. And sometimes I watch it and I think, cool, that looks nice. that looks nicer than it actually was that morning. <laughs> I, I mean, these places were rugged mm. as every bit as much as they were beautiful, weren't they? Yeah. So it must have been an interesting contrast. You got this in, there's some tremendous like drone shots mm. of sunrises over mountains yeah, incredible. and you know, like literally a travel show yeah. as well. Mm. Um, showcasing the, the the kind of rugged beauty of these environments. Yeah. But it must have been pretty it looks like the desert as well. In, yeah, in yeah. Time. Which are you yeah. talking about? Oriana, Oriana, Salagu as well. To yeah, a they, they've all got their sort of beauty though. Like even Parco's got its beauty, and it, and, and we did. We obviously do concentrate on the bits that look nice. Um, Which would admit w w wasn't actually that difficult, presumably at Oriana, for instance. No, where it's like a moonscape, the most crazy yeah. landscape you yeah. can fish in. But in terms of Salagu, what would have been a success before you set out? What what was you, what were you hoping for? Well, in in the back of our minds, we thought. It, I thought if I catch a 40 pound out yeah. there, I'd be happy. 50 pounder would have been an outrageous success. Um, but we both caught 40s and, and Neil caught a really rare 60 pounder, which was just like, you Talk know. Talk to us about the magnitude of that capture. I mean, how, to, to give people an idea of just how in inverted commas lucky you got. I there. think the <laughs> easiest way to put it into perspective is to talk about a guy called uh, Damien Simonelli, who helps us a lot in the south of France. Now, Damien's fished Salagou for on and off for I think he said 20 years and he'd never caught one of that size so I think it was on the fifth or sixth night of, of fishing um I've had the bite played it in from the bank this thing popped up in the edge and like I still get goosebumps thinking about it now because it, it felt like a better fish um I was a little bit worried it might be a catfish because there'd been a couple of them about oh, and it, we're gonna talk cat <laughs> we're gonna talk cat <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> keep catching catfish <laughs> everywhere i go I mean, this was a thread right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it is it now yeah it's fucking ridiculous but anyway but then, yeah then this this mirror popped up bundled in bundled it into the net dovey's sort of over my shoulder and we the first thing we said we were like no do you know what it is actually on um it is actually on uh emergency but it's my brother <laughs> needs on my emergency contacts i'm so sorry well this is this is unheard of um yeah when it when it was a, a carp that popped up we bundled it into the net and our first reaction it wasn't is it 60 pound it was we've done it we wanted a 40 pound and this was it was clearly over 40 pound and it was one of them fish that because it's at night it was just, you could literally see the dawn was just breaking and it was every time you looked back at it it was getting bigger you're like that's just really deep that's just long it's just really wide. How big is it? And we, we decided to, to weigh it there mm, and there. Before. Which is probably a great decision because... Yeah, well, yeah. yeah on yeah. the edge, you know. Yeah. But... Um, to, to, I'll tell you what, for me, it was... It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, after that, it was such a good morning, weren't uh -huh. it? We were singing, dancing around. I've, I've actually got You do video. quite a lot of dancing in the series. We do yeah. quite a lot of dancing. Mainly yeah. you, Debbie, it has to be said. Do, really? Sort of like... Well, the sort of, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the earliest it's like, we've drunk gin. Yeah, it's early. Yeah, it was like nine a.m. and we were drinking. You couldn't gin. get coffee, but you could get gin. We <laughs> could get gin. Yeah. <laughs> but we were listening to music loud on the boat, and it was just a buzz, wasn't it, the whole morning? But actually, when you got it in the net, and we were doing that bit to camera, it was like relief. It was it, it, it yes. was excitement, but more relief because it was like. We knew we had a good show because we were having a laugh together. We knew we had a good show because it looked amazing, Salad Good, but all we needed was a big fish. And it was just like, fucking guess, like we That's exactly we, what it was. We actually had it done and it was we I knew it was in the bag when that happened. So it was just um it's the same as it, the end of Parco as well. Yeah. That was a tough yeah. week, but a funny tough week. Yeah. But it was uh it was just so nice to get that at the end because it's like something special. Were you always gonna open with Salago episode? Did you have these things in your head? beforehand or did the what happened there yeah I mean, yeah so, 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 Salago was they normally go pretty much in order of actually filming them um just because of the logistics of getting it edited yeah in, but yeah. We're, we're at Salago how long were we there for 11 days or something it's yeah. like quite a long time and uh often we the first show it is an hour and a half special episode um, and it worked out best that that was the one yeah. that, that would be an hour and a half because there was just so so much going on that you well, you could you could have done a two hour show really but people wouldn't. Sit I think it. what I loved about it, Dovey, was that you know by being there for eleven days, mm -hmm. 
there's no pressure to to fill. You know, no. you, it, it was pacey because there was no pressure to fill. Exactly. Yeah. Um, if if you'd caught, if nothing happened, then you know how you can't make that TV show, can you? You no. can't make it on TV with that. No, no, but, no. Um, I want to know a little bit about what goes in the background, though, a bit behind the scenes, because it looked like an interesting setup. You couldn't put bivvies up, right? Yeah. Was it tough to actually live in that environment? How, how are you being supplied? How's stuff coming to the shoot? And how are you powering stuff? How, what's day to day life like on a monster carp shoot? Right. Okay. Do you want to answer? Yeah. We got um, often. You've got the lots of the crew don't stay with us overnight, so they'll have a an Airbnb somewhere close. In this case, it was actually a campsite, wasn't it? <laughs> Literally just around the corner. Mm. So. Um, Kurt, who's been around for lots of years, he was coming into camp three times a day, coming in the mornings with a big urn full of hot water so we could have a cup of coffee, a um, bit of breakfast, lunchtime, you know. And you've got a big cool box, a good cool box because of how hot it was just to keep some drinks and snacks cool that you could just go on to throughout the day. And and there's your answer for the charging stuff as well. Everything goes back to the very dodgy, dodgy campsite yeah. that one weren't it yeah. but you know that they're having to yeah. i would rather have lived under the stars than in that campsite <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was bad it had a really bad name that's why we're laughing we can't sort of yeah we yeah we can't say too much yeah we can't drop a minute but um so yeah so it's so day-to-day life you've got the you've got a switch over of, of you've got some night camera people that are which i want to talk about because that okay. in theory tough job i would find that very difficult you like your are sleep, these guys are awake rich? all night. Um, no. It depends. It depends on the fishing. If I'm catching, I'm because not going to hang my rods up. You know, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm giving too much away by saying that there was an awful lot of night t- night bites yeah. in the series as a whole. Yeah, yeah, so there was. I think probably I haven't seen that necessarily in our industry before. Like the, the emphasis on getting the bite, even if it's at night, which yeah. you obviously thought about. You yeah, know, you yeah. Thought, we have to have that noise. We have to have that, even when you can't really see what's going on. Yeah, you that pick moment. up a sense of commotion and pandemonium yeah, starting yeah. to break out well actually it was one of the things that i sort of set out at the beginning of the series is that we said what's the what's the best moment for you when you're carp fishing it's the bite isn't yeah. it and we haven't done it as much as i wanted to but i really wanted to make sure that 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 bite seemed like really special when it happened um you know more cameras on it better ca- you know like cash recordings um, and we've managed to get them all the way through the night as well, which is, you know, we, we think it's really important because it is that, like, you do, you put all of the effort in, you go there, you put your baits out, there's all of the doubt in your mind, you don't know where it's going to happen, but, like, everything clicks when the alarm goes off, so you need to make sure we're capturing it. And we're losing, all of us who make films, you you know, and you guys included, you lose something when it's pulled out of a bag in the morning, don't yeah. you? When the night disappears yeah. without anything, and actually you'd have lost half the show. Mm, he would. Because you had an awful lot going on at night. Mm. Oh, yeah, we're filming all the way through the night. So, so as, talk- sorry, as far as the crew, when you were yeah. saying about the crew, we've got um, a couple of guys. Booth, Jack Booth is like a good friend of mine now. He He's worked with me for, I don't know, four years, I think, probably as my night cam. He's an angler and a very good cameraman as well. So he gets it. And he enjoys being there as well. So he's just working at night and he'll literally start all night with me, drinking tea, chatting about music or cart fishing or whatever it is. And because you've got someone there that's like, you know, you're not annoying getting up. He's there with you by your side all of the time. It makes it so much easier. It really does. And you've got Lewis for that as well. I was going to say, I've got Lewis for saying. These guys are like Trojans. They work so hard. And Booth's one of these guys that is really relaxed he likes his carp fishing, like I said, so he can go away and sleep for a few hours in the day and catch up. And uh, you never, ever hear a moan out of their mouths. And that's like rare. So, so these guys, the cameras are set up. Yeah. They're, they're on, they're on cache. They are sleeping by the camera. Is that, is that how it works? When they do sleep, it doesn't sound like you get a lot of sleep, do we, yeah. on these shoes? Yeah. Well, well, if you sometimes you're catching all the way through the night. Yeah. So, and by the time you're filming it, and especially if you're boat fishing, it's like, you only need to catch two or three, really, when you're boat fishing. You're yeah. not sleeping at all. It takes an hour to get the rod out sometimes, you know. Um, so there, we've always got, because of the drone shots, we always try and keep quite a clean camp. But we have to have at least an, one extra bivy each next to us. Yeah. Um, so that they're close enough to, you know, as close as we are to the rods, they are to the camera. So they can get up and touch the, ca- you know, start recording yeah. beforehand. But also, we've we've ne- if they can't get too close to us, we now press the yeah. cache. We need, make sure you press it nice and softly so it doesn't show the camera. <laughs> Run past, and then by they've got we've got two receivers on our sets of alarms. So I'll have a receiver, and then my cameraman will have a receiver. As soon as we get a bite, you I pick up the rod, and they're there. You know, 
filming already so it's like it's a slick operation now and, and the atmosphere that, that that you were able to capture because it's night is much more intimate it, yeah it was if you excuse the pun night and day at Salagoon. Mm. busy yeah incredibly yeah. beautiful bright southern french mm. scenery and then at night this it's quiet you know atmosphere yeah. you, you've got big fish on potentially mm. so I, I think it's really nice to pick up those those bits yeah and, and probably a step further than you could accomplish without a big crew or yeah a, a big enough crew yeah yeah definitely um but in terms of the 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 way that you guys spend your time in the day because carp fishing does, there's not stuff going on all the time and i think one of the things that that i touched on before was how little slack there is in the shows mm -hmm. so you're not just chucking stuff in and filming stuff all the time presumably because there's no point it's not like no. oh we haven't caught anything actually you're just cutting to the next bit of action so what do you fill your days with well I think the, I, I can answer that one, the, 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 the. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this was important. This is this, Yeah, we were actually snorkeling out there to uh, go and look at our spots, which was meant so good to go and do that. Adds a dimension to the fishing. Why do I look so yellow? I don't know. I don't know. I've got <laughs> liver disease or something. Goo. Like, <laughs> bad yeah. hepatitis. Um, Let's get that checked out. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what is that? That's that. It must be that monitor, is it? Yeah, let's blame them. Probably no one else can see that, uh, WM. No, 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 how yeah. bizarre. Um, <laughs> how would you feel? So there's a fine line as well between, you know what it's like with fishing in general. You can try too hard sometimes. And with the, the camera crew there, you can feel pressure to do something. So it's really important to just take a step back and think about it, right? Forget the, the camera crew aren't here. What If we're not catching what's going wrong, um, and if you can figure that out, what are we going to do about it? Not, it's one of it was one of Ali's faults actually, um, that he could because he wanted to succeed so bad because he'd put so much effort into the whole thing. He would, and because he's like, a, a, like a what is it, a Cub Scout? He's yeah. like he's like making sure that everything's right all of the time. He would want to make a decision to change something before you needed to change it, and it was often us that said, "Ow." Just calm down a little bit. It'll happen. We're doing the right thing. It's fishing, you know. Something isn't going to happen all of the time. So we have taken a more relaxed re approach with it. And it's like, we know we're doing the right thing. We're going to sit back and it will happen um, instead of just trying to make content for the sake of it. And like you said, we're there for such a long period of time and things will naturally happen at a natural pace and it comes across much nicer in the edit. And uh, if we decided to fill that time all day with filming, we would have so much stuff to to cut out of the show that you then have to craft a story out of it and it's hard enough basically it we fish what we, do we basically fish now don't we yeah we, we're fishing and you're you're following the fishing and if it's super slow and we feel like we don't want to make a change so there's nothing to follow with as far as the cameras go um then we'll we'll do a, a chat between us or a bit of a scene that we think might be funny now scenes yeah um <laughs> i mean i don't think hopefully we well we can we can cut this if I'm not allowed to say it, but I I absolutely loved the Jaws scene. <laughs> no, <did> Fantastic! You? <laughs> like you, right, in my head, I'm thinking they've obviously got somehow they've watched it, yeah, so that you can copy it shot for shot. It's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Loved that. Good. Wasn't expecting it. Uh, good, are, good. You, um, are you a Jaws Massive fan? Massive Jaws fan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a, I'm, you know, as a you know, my my, my degree <laughs> was marine biology. Like I, I was a big shark fan as a kid. Brilliant. You know, like, uh, had books on sharks and shark attacks and things like that, the gory stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, we, we saw your smile then, Rich. Can't yeah. believe it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and a laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like the smile of a, of a great white before it, it bites your leg off. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what is it? Smile, you. What's that? Son of a bitch. Oh, what? Well, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but no, phenomenal. Loved, yeah. loved that. Do these scenes get concocted beforehand? No, so no. that 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 was that was the, the 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 perfect example of the crew having a say and coming up with something. Going, all right, we'll try it. Let's just do it. We've got we, 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 the rods are out. They're not being taken out just yet, and uh, <laughs> we've we've got some time to do something. And um, I don't know, I forgot whose idea it was. was it Ross's idea. I think it was Ross's. Yeah, shout out to Ross. Actually, he's new director. Um, brilliant on set, like amazing. Keeps it keeps everyone happy and comes up with brilliant ideas 
and uh, that was that was you know that was one of them. And then because it's an open forum, then a couple of the cameramen would be like, "I'd love to try and shoot that." Then we get it up on YouTube and find out how to make it, and we just give it a go. It took like th four hours, probably. yeah, it took a long time, four to do or five that. hours to do that. It's not a short scene. Um, well, it is a short scene, but it's not short to to film the whole yeah. thing. And we do, and we've done it quite a few times as well, looking back on it and making sure that it was right. Um, and then when you've got a good director there that knows he can cut it properly, it was. Um, it's good, good fun. I think it's brilliant. I think the only thing, the only thing was missing. I think there's a bit of a dolly zoom or something that you did, you couldn't perhaps couldn't pull it's off. It's the conscious reason. zoom. Yeah, yeah. conscious yeah. zoom. We tried. It's yeah, moving it's in yeah. but out yes, at the same time. It, yeah. We we got it, but not quite as well. I, I yeah. think they probably had a different. But set this of is the great kit. thing about having guys who who film all kinds of stuff. You know, yeah. they they're un, they're likely to have done it before. Exactly. Right? So yeah, we we've got a big sort of array of people as well, haven't we? We've got from people that are like from Booth, that's a cameraman and a carp angler, to um. Jawadnia, who's really, really technical and yep. loves all of that side of thing. He shot most of that, to be fair, didn't he? He did, yeah. Um, and then you've got people that work on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, people that work on X Factor. A bit so like, you've got a, lots of different people that yeah. can do different jobs. Absolutely. Um, so, so are all scenes, there must be some scenes that you go there knowing that you're likely to shoot, though. No. No. Uh, no, no, I'll tell you what, we're, sometimes the opener, well, all of the time the opener, to be yeah. fair. Like we, when we come back, we, we, we shot a scene in the um, baths in Hungary me and Neil sitting down playing chess. It's quite, um, it was quite funny, actually. Um, and then, what are the other ones? We didn't have an opener to it. Oh, no, we did have an opener to it. Yeah. Of course we did. Actually, the, the Italy opener, we had booked in, but we couldn't do it at the beginning of the show. So that one was, the opener was actually filmed two thirds of we, the way through. We, yeah, so we, we, probably the opener is the only one that we that we say we're definitely going to do. And then we sort of, we make up ideas on the fly and then get it done. Uh, scripted opener? Or just themes that you um, want to cover? Theme, half scripted. Yeah. Yeah. And how long did that poor guy have to pull you around Venice? We went round three times. Three times. It wasn't too long. No. No, I mean, bad. each round, each time round's about 12 minutes or something. Mm. So we're probably in the in the gondola for 45 minutes, say. So. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't scripted. Yeah. No, we I, just... I, I'm actually... The only one that's scripted no, was... No, just the one we've just done, I think. The one we've just done. And that's only because the chat is linked directly to the chess. Yeah. So it's like there's, you know... There's ideas of what we words, wanted to basically. say we're not going to give it away but you'll you'll understand when you see it yeah and you don't lose anything in in the uh in it having been scripted because your best stuff is because you're just mates mm. yeah absolutely it seems to be the easiest yeah. way for you to work doesn't and it? we always find when we when we do these when we do a, a you know a, a chat a coming together scene where we're talking about the fishing i'd say nine times out of ten it's the very first one that we, because you know, you might do might do them a couple of times on occasion, but it's always the first one that we go back to because it's it's always the most natural. Once you're doing the same chat for a second or third time, then it becomes a script because you're wait. I'm waiting for Tom to finish. I know what he's going to say. And I know what I'm going to say, and then it all feels a bit eggy. Mm. If you get it first time, perfect. T talk to me about the um, this sort of slight adversarial relationship between you as well. As much as you're good mates, there's one of the threads that runs throughout the, the shows is this is the competitive element. I, I don't think I've realised how competitive I was until I realised how competitive Dovey was, in particular that the relationship with his brothers is <laughs> ridiculous, but brilliant at the same time. Um, and I think since we've started doing these shows, you want to win. Sometimes it's because it, you know, you're getting choice to swim, mm. so it's important. Mm. But that's become less important, so it's more important just to beat him. <laughs> it is so. It is. Which it has to be said, we're not going to give too much away, Neil. You had a decent run at this, haven't you? Oh, you right, know, considering Rich. that Dovey's you yeah. know, well regarded as a bit of a natural talent with the fishing, you're yeah. a hard working guy. Yeah. And you've you know, you've managed to for starters at Salagu, you know, you've knocked him out of the park. Oh, All right, Rich. <laughs> I'm sitting here. <laughs> I'm in the room. <laughs> but, no, you you've done you've done particularly well this year. Yeah, yeah. I've I, People's champion, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely is yeah. the people's champion. <laughs> oh, this is all turning a bit awkward. I feel awkward when it's all on me. But yeah, I've smashed him. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? The truth is, is that actually the, the two that I organised, I caught the biggest, two biggest yeah, fish. Yeah, true. And the two you organised, you caught the biggest fish. Yeah. But in general, you have done much better this year. Yeah, than, I've, yeah, than, I've than I have. Which, to be honest as well, maybe it's, I'm saying it because I lost. Not lost, but I didn't do as well. But... I have got less competitive as I've got older. I'm sure of it. Do you not think? No. I think I have. I feel like I'm let. I'm, I feel like I. Maybe because I just want the show to do so well, I'm less 
agitated by someone else doing well. Like, I, I, I like somebody doing well, but I always feel like I put pressure on myself to be better. Um, and I, I don't feel like I'm... No, now, you, now you've put it like that, I actually... I get what you're saying now. Yeah, you're I, you're no less competitive. No, I'm, I'm no, I'm not. You're not. I just I'm just really really happy that the shows are going yeah. well, and I'm not. Um, and, I'm, and, and, and even though we joke, we're really competitive with each other, and it's all a joke. But it doesn't um, doesn't like stress like stress me out to get good at it. Do you know what I mean? And and also we've proved ourselves, I think, a little bit on these shows. Like we don't yeah, we, we don't so. need to go and prove ourselves anymore. And I, I was about to say when you were saying how great I've done this year. <laughs> 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 oh, I was going to say genuinely there's no there's, if it's the other one whichever way is there's, there's no bad blood we do just want to make a good show and we both know whichever one of us catches that whacker there is that that sigh of relief yeah there like, is oh, yeah. you've done it again. Yeah, and we're happy for genuine I'm, I'm always happy for people when they do well yeah. my competitive streak doesn't ruin that in fact it's I'm like yeah, I, under I understand how they feel, so it's like I'm I'm buzzing for someone genuinely, yeah. not um not the other way around. I just put pressure on myself to do well as well. Do you think the chemistry and and that kind of the relationship you're able to show on camera is a little easier because it's not three. Three is a very awkward number. Three's a to crowd, see. isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's difficult. So the intimacy you've got is 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 more, I think, in this in mm. this show because it's not diluted by having that third person. And, and that was yeah. a conscious decision, you know. That was what you another could have question. taken someone else on. That was, was one that, of the main questions. A, yeah, right, right. You know, not not no. now. Ellie's gone. Are oh, you doing Monster Carp? It was. Is someone going to replace Al? No one's going to replace Al, are they? Let's be you honest. Can't. He's 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 such a unique character was yeah. that ever seriously considered no option? no the, the problem you've got Tobe is I think whatever happens if you bring someone in A Al's irreplaceable because he's so unique but it would be unfair on the person you brought in because they'd then be compared to Al mm. and it it just wouldn't have well, been right. Well, and actually, when you when you look at what's you know the people in, in even the wider industry, how many people have got TV experience that uh, at your level? Never mm. mind Ali, who's been in it a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, you need you, yeah. It was it was never going to be right adding, no. adding someone else into the mix, and because it sort of happened over a long period of time, Ali leaving and you know being able to sort it out, it was always really clear to us that we wanted to do it on our own. And I, I've always felt that the shows need more space in them. I always thought they were a bit sort of shouty and punchy and too many montages and trying to get trying to get too many fish in and i thought just with two of us it's going to slow it down a little bit you sort of see how beautiful the lakes are more gives a bit of more time for the relationship side of things and you still manage to catch loads of big fish mm. i just it, I, I thought it would the format um, did, would be did nicer. you have conversations with itv to that effect that it wasn't going to be quite as tabloid that is this was going to be a bit more um yeah. sort of thoughtful and 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 um a slow, well, it's still pacey for me, but but I, I get what you're saying. There's a little bit more reflection in it. Yeah, I, yeah, it will feel really pacey compared to the sitography stuff, won't it? Yes. Um, yeah, they they knew obviously with Ali going because they they ITV have seen us for however many yeah. years, so they know what me and Neil are like, and they know what Ali's like. Um, so they knew that it was going to be a different show without him. Um, and I I I just basically wrote a treatment, um, sent it over to them, and they they like the idea of it and, and and it's gone from there why do you think they commissioned you again and and show no sign of of being unhappy with the the situation is it purely numbers do they realize that, that fishing is a a market that you know you give them access to that perhaps they wouldn't have otherwise yeah it's a dead cert for them isn't it they're going to put it they're going to put it on tv and they're going to get a few hundred thousand viewers and it's easy for them They've got, a, I think ITV have got a really good deal out of it. We love working with ITV, um, but they, they have got a good deal there. You know, they, mm. you, they've they got to produce a lot of it them, themselves and come up with the ideas and put the money up. And we're, we're, we're putting the money up, giving them a finished article that they know is going to do numbers. Yeah. Like, how, that's lovely for them, you yeah. know? There you go, Perfect. mate. Stick that in and press play. You're good yeah. to go. I mean, they, they still do have a say on what, what what's, what's what on there, but very little now. Mm. Um, so that they... They like it as much as we do. I guess they've got a lot more trust for us now, haven't they? Like you said, they know what they're getting. Yeah. I, I, when I when I sent the first when I sent Salagu over to the commissioner, he just rang up and said, "You guys make good TV." Mm. So, and I thought, yeah, no, we do. You know, like you know, we've we've all without Al, we've learned from that whole process now, and um, 
yeah yeah everyone's everyone's fed into that haven't they because you you've gathered experience from you know nick warner people like that ali yeah. you know that they've all had their input over the years that's not to say you haven't changed things oh no no we've changed things a little bit but they, they uh, ali and nick got this this is their yeah. thing this yeah, is theirs they, you know yeah this is um it must have been really really hard for al to walk away from this and, and i know how hard it was for him anyway because i've i speak to him a lot but that you know this is once the cart was their baby it was their yeah. idea it, you know, it was a, it was a lot of pain to get it online, um, and then to walk away and then see it changed a little bit, and your two mates doing it, and hopefully it being successful. You know, Al still at, he says it, but he's going to be our num number one fan, and he will be. You of know, course. he, he yeah. wants it to succeed, but still, that that's difficult. That C can we um, loop back around to Salago because. Uh, I do do want to get a little, across a little bit of the uh, a little bit more of the tactical stuff now that that you know was it what you expected to be faced with like what were the challenges um okay so from the from the get go we knew it was effectively a beach that we'd be fishing in the south of France so you kind you try to prepare yourself for probably a few people swimming you know that you're going to be doing a lot of boat work to get your rigs in place so from a bait and rig point of view we we more or less knew what we'd be doing from the get-go but that first day when we had rods in the water and the beach goers descended you can't be prepared for that be because it was tom hit the nail on the head earlier it was carnage there was pedlos going across your spot swimmers picking your rigs up the pedlos picking up your h blocks that you've you know you've carefully positioned into little holes in the weed and then then it gets a bit windy and that brings out the kite surface and the wind surface and what's the other the hydrofoils mm. that are the perfect thing for wiping your lines out you know so and you're doing all this when you're really tired because you can't sleep because you've got no bivy so it's like it's difficult it is hard yeah that, to, to that get was fine done. for me i sleep under the stars quite a bit you oh, you, you need to uh, you were a bit rubbish at that what i don't understand no but it's do you like sleeping under the stars yeah just, as long as as long as i can sort of cover my head a bit yeah fine. Ah. I feel, I feel you like should have seen him, right? I'm I feel like there. something's going to get me from behind. I'm there just with my bed and my <laughs> kit around me. I, you, like, look at him in the morning. He's got all this camo netting up. He's got a mozzie mesh hanging in front. He'd made himself like look like he's trying to do a bit of glamping. <laughs> I've never known anyone like it. It was a bit a bit embarrassing. But, <laughs> um, so sorry. So going back to, to your question, Rich, from a from a tactics point of view, it was what we expected. We were we fished how we expected to fish. But you, you can't be ready for that many people because we'd never never been faced with anything like that before. And all you can do, you can't get cross with them because we're fishing in their beach. You've just got to smile and wave and... Put the rod back out. Yeah, re hit reset, waiting for another half hour for it to happen again. I have actually got a clip. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to play it, but it does... I mean, it shows it really well, of kind of what you guys are doing. Heading back down to the south of France, it just always carries with it incredibly warm memories. Cassian... Yeah car says some of the best carp we've ever caught and ever likely to catch there was kind of that missing lake and that is lake salagu salagu was genuinely going to be our biggest challenge yet it's massive it's like 2,000 acres and there are loads of hurdles to get over you get wiped out by people <laughs> you're fishing braid minutes. as well so it's like it's like, like, like carly yeah, it's like snaps your lines instantly or <laughs> takes your rod out <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be prepared to be wiped out by pedalos, by hydrofoilers. <laughs> by wind surface, by was he, was he angry? That no, not at all. Just very bad at hydrofoilers. Just don't expect that to happen. Oh, you are joking me. <laughs> <laughs> does it sound like Yeah, that guy, that guy wasn't angry at all. He, Neil had a did you get white? No, you, you, so you, you'd you, been, I got wiped out by him. Yeah, that guy. In fact, it was he the then, one from the from the jaws scene. Was he the one that wiped you out? Yeah, I think he was. <laughs> okay. he, he basically wiped out my rod, snapped the line. Yeah. Then managed to get over my other two, and then went towards you. But in the meantime, Neil had a bite. So Neil's obviously had to pick the rod up. The line's going through the thing, and this guy is coming like about 100 miles yeah. an hour, totally out of control as well. He doesn't has <laughs> he no was idea. A he was he had no a idea what he's doing. <laughs> But it was like we 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 got out there and it was all tangled up and they said we've got a, we've got a fish on. He's like, I am the fish. And he was like, 
this guy's not getting what's going on. <laughs> you're not the fish. You're not fish. He's not getting what's going on here. We, ma we actually managed to get round him because obviously Hydrofall is like a, um, a short surfboard with like a, um, say like a pole coming down and like a fin at the bottom. So when they pick up a speed, they sort of pick up in the Come water up in a little water, bit. Don't they? Yeah. But when they shit it, it obviously the, the, that it's acting like a massive hook under the water just to take your line out so they're like they're, they're perfectly made to take you out D did the people interact with you were they interested in what you were doing was it obvious you're filming there or uh, you have a few people come and say hello don't you yeah we, it was nice when I, I think it was that fight where I'm going out of the boat playing that fish when we've got out and the fish is actually still on unbelievably. And as I've landed it, there was a family on a pedlo just all cheering along with, they didn't know what they were cheering for, but they were they were definitely getting involved with it. Mm. It was great. And, and that's the sort of the, the, the carnage they cause, or we're causing, whichever way you look at it, to do what we do. It's all sort of forgotten about. When you when you land the fish out there and you've got all this going, going on around you, yeah, it was just, it was incredible. Great, great fun very different to most fishing we'll ever do right having that that color around you was made for some great footage i think yeah it looks amazing that show doesn't it that that's another thing that we wanted to make sure that we did as well is to show i always felt like when we watched the show you didn't really get a sort of a feeling for being there um but i think you do now yeah you i mean you, you you managed to see how amazing it looks and like you said because salagu there was so much going on so much color so much people it's like it brings something different than, than anywhere else and do you leave a place with with an affection for it yeah if, I, despite everything yeah 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 i have done a few places it's it's, it's annoying because there's loads of places that I want to go back to, but because we're still we're still carrying on with the series, it's like you you never get the chance to go back. Um, but yeah, a few of the places you fall in love with, and you, you well, I will be going back. Hmm. But we'll probably have to wait until we stop filming Monster Car to have a chance to, to have it. the time to go and yeah. do it. So I mean, realistically, Neil, you don't need to go back to Salago, do you? Cause... Nah, I've done it. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dubby, this the Salago actually starts a, a, a rather unfortunate run of um, catfish for you, doesn't it? Yeah. What can you explain why Neil doesn't catch when you do? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. It happened everywhere as well. I like, get the rod set. Imagine it's Salago as well. It's like you are so tired by the end of the day because all you've been doing is putting your rods back out. It gets to dark. You think oh all the people have left this is lovely and then you get a bite and it's catfish you just oh, i just want to kill it <laughs> wouldn't kill it but you are but very respectful know. towards them to be fair <laughs> on you know on, on camera they're not respectful they bite me though don't yes. they, they, not bite they you. do bite me they bite me every single time it's all it's because it's because when you're filming obviously you don't want the fish to swim away because then you've not got it on camera so you naturally put your hand in front of the like with a carp you obviously do you hold their mouth or whatever and even if they go for it, they can sort of just, swim into your hand. They swim into your hand. Yeah. But I was doing the same thing with the catfish. And then they open their mouth and it sort of sucks your hand in and then they bite you with their pads. Yeah. He sure. thinks it that, that didn't happen. <laughs> Obviously. But I, I had grazes. I've, it's only just healed, actually, that one. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I uh, particularly liked the, the, we we're going to talk about it in a bit, but the efforts you went to at Orellana to, to be rewarded with those little grey slug <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're like the shittiest <laughs> fish of the shittiest type of fish. The one you, that first one. From, doesn't even, they don't even uh, fight, man. And they're literally like grey things like this, like big bulbous <laughs> uh, eyes on the side of their head. I always think what they must think though, because they're sitting there eating and all of a sudden they're like 450 <laughs> yards away from their mates and just like, just knackered, just yeah. being reeled in. But yeah, just annoying catfish. And but like I said, because it takes so long to get the rods back out and you put so much effort into getting them right, when you get wiped up by a catfish in the middle of the night, it's just a disaster. It's aggro. Talk to me about the spots that you were fishing uh, at Salago. It looked very interesting, incredibly shallow, you said holes mm. in the weed it looks uh, quite technical in a way the fishing mm -hmm. yeah i mean you're not allowed to fish more than 100 yards out 100 meters i think 100 meters yeah so and you've got a lot of weed there and it's not like um one one end of the lake is deeper but the the the, the end that we were fishing because we're there in the summer um it was shallower so you're fishing like between well some of the spots are like 25 yards out aren't they? between 25 and 100 meters i suppose um and you're dropping them in holes in the weed and you can actually snorkel there as well. So we were dropping the rigs, going out there, checking that everything's right, um, and then going back and waiting for someone to take you out. But what you were doing as well, to try and minimize the taking out as much as possible, you snorkel back along your line, you can see your braid, and you're sort of diving down and trying to just tuck it under some of the fronds of weed, just so that 
you're keeping it as low as you possibly can because you're fishing. It's sort of weird, isn't it? You're fishing a floating braid because you don't want to be in the weed. But the last thing you want on Salago is a load of floating braid straight out to your spot. So you're trying to pin it all down in amongst it. Um, and again, that's what made that place so, so special. So they, they restrict you to fishing the shallowest, <laughs> weediest, most busy <laughs> section of the lake. To, um, yeah, and everything's what, against you. Yeah. yeah. But that's why it makes it so good when you get yeah. one. It's like, like what we say a lot, but success is always best on the edge of failure, isn't it? Mm. And uh, that you feel like you're failing constantly until you get one in the net, which is the excitement of the whole thing. Were you both doing the same thing? Do you, in terms of sharing tactics, is that is that something yeah. that you try and work yeah, through we're together? Working yeah. As, we're working yeah, it's not a team. competition. We're, we're, we have a laugh between us, but we are we want we we're working together to get this so done. A yeah, a couple of little ring of loves going out Tom, at various times on these shoots. Yeah, talk to me about the whole, the, the, the tiger nut thing, right? They're, they're a bit of a theme yeah. with the European fishing generally, aren't they? Yeah. Why, why are they so good? They're so good because carp love them, and they're pest fish proof. They're like, they, they sit out there until a the carp picks it up. And and the, the the small fish are always the biggest hurdle on them big lakes. Mm. You can you can put out a kilo of bait, a hook bait that's not big enough, and you are not fishing within 10 minutes. And because it takes such a long time to put the rigs out, you only do it once or twice every 24 hours. So you can waste an awful lot of time if you haven't got the right hook bait on. So you end up fishing with something that's less attractive, with a hook that's not quite as sharp as like a sharpened one as you put it out just so it will actually be sitting there by the time a, a carp comes along mm. um and them rings of love like four four tiger three or four tigers on a ring they and i don't often don't put a cork with them either so they're literally just pshunk, hard on the bottom and when a carp comes it'll pick it up and nothing else will it's fair to say this on screen is, is a subtle rig by by comparison to the ring of love isn't it yeah it is yeah what, what would you been uh, where would that where was that tom uh, that would be like? nils wasn't it or is that mine? Oh, no, I'll tell you where there was. That was Oriana. Right. Um, not as many nuisance fish there. So you could go a little bit more subtle. Yeah. A bit more um, like what you would naturally be inclined to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, we weren't fishing so far out and it was easier to put the rods out. Well, I mean, it, it, in the beginning I was fishing yeah. a long way out, but the second swim I wasn't. Um, and these are things like the the, the, the the bit of fake corn, the the guy that was looking after us there, he said that he'd caught a lot of big fish on it. Um, so we, you know, you thought you try it, then it works, and then you have it on all your rods by the end of the trip. How do you assess the information you're being given by very well-meaning local guys who are, who are effectively trying to put you on the cart? Mm. Like how much do you have to take that, put it to one side, and do what you were going to do anyway? Mm. I think you, I think we do. I, I think I do the same as I would do if I went to a, like a syndicate lake or something. I, I try and get information out of everyone, and I make up my mind about it. And you can, especially with these trips, you quickly learn who you can trust and who's good. Like that Damien is so much better than us at that sort of yeah. fishing that really you'd want him to put your rod out for you. Um, so we, we listen to everything he says. Every word, we? every word. Um, but if you go, you go to Oriana, there's a few different people there that we listen to and it's often conflicting. So you just have to think, right, we know what we're doing here. It's the type of fishing we're doing all of the time. Yeah. We can make up our own mind, you know. Do you guys have like generic European setups just available in in your garage at all to, uh, for the, for monster carp like spooled <laughs> up with with rope? Well, yeah, I've, we've got lots of sets of rods yeah. and reels. So um, there's there's a set that I use for a you know a twenty acre syndicate lake, and then I'll be taking a different set when we go elsewhere. But I don't know what you do. No, generally speaking, I've I've got two sets of rods. I've got a twelve foot and a thirteen foot set, and a set obviously a set of reels on each. Um, but I have got spare spools. God, you must do some respooling, mate, if you've got two I've sets got of... spare spools. Okay, right. I do keep spare. So yeah. I've got, you know, I might have braid can stay on there almost, almost, not forever, but you can get a good few seasons worth out of a, a well, spool Even of braid. when you're getting cut off like every day? Did, yeah, well, to was, be fair, a lot of the time we weren't actually getting cut off. Right. You were getting wiped out, <laughs> but you could often salvage it. Not every time. Yeah. Um, to be fair, you had... You had a lot more disasters at Salago because than I was I on did. the right hand side of the swim, which was actually in the beach. I was fishing in the beach, in the swimming so zone. So I was, as and well. it was shallower, and I was just getting more at yeah. more aggravation with it. D does that mean the fish were coming in among the people? Would you say? Yeah, they were definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't catch as many that trip, which would go to say that they're prob the fish were probably more out left. Um, but they, I, I've caught. Did I catch one or two on that right hand spot that was really shallow? Two. Like it was next to the next to the line where the where you where the swimmers were allowed, and it was literally up against it almost. Wasn't yeah, it? you could. People were standing up next to my hand yeah. block, and I that was the first that. bite. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I loved uh, and the drone stuff, just of the weed, and it just looks. And in fact, some of the night stuff when you're out playing it, the weed is incredible. It's like sort of ribbon like mm. stuff coming off the bottom. 
Yeah. There's no wonder the fish were there, but they were there at night so much. You think they, why do you think they, um, they sort of moved in at night, if you like, into a weedy area, which kind of goes against what possibly you should Yeah, be thinking. I, I think they were there all of the time, but because of the amount of nightmares we were having in the day. We just weren't it, 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 nev enough. it never worked out. Yeah, Neil's rods were slightly quieter, the ones that were out longer and left out towards yeah. the main area of the lake. And they're the ones that done most of the bites in the day. So I don't think it was necessarily that the fish weren't there in the day, so that we weren't we weren't fishing at the right time. You know, it was there was too much going on. Mm. And it's just quiet at night nothing wiping you out and you just sit there and wait for a bite it was lovely did yeah, you sleep catfish. much no i i don't i don't i, I didn't sleep you had, really. you had an encounter with uh with some of the local wildlife didn't you yeah so, can't with that, that put you that, that put you on edge that was it? so on edge it was the first night i got there he said we can't use bivy so i'm sitting underneath my um why is that tom why, why well, you, can't you use bivy because um the tourist board there don't want carp anglers in tents all the way around the lake there's camping seasons and camping areas um so there's no distinguishing between carp anglers and, and camping people so it was like no no bivvies unless it rains um you can put a brolly up um but apart from that they don't want people just and i think people would sit there for longer which is what's happened to cassian and a few of the other places yeah. that um Unfortunately, some carp anglers aren't respectful to their surroundings and they end up ruining it for everyone else. So I think a lot of them tourist boards have said, no bivvies, no camping. We're going to keep it looking nice and people won't stay there long enough to ruin it. I actually quite like the vibe. It looked a bit like a bush camp, sort of, especially once you had I the- I loved uh, it. Yeah, yeah. it genuinely it was, loved it. I loved it in the end as well. But yeah. in the beginning, it was like just sleeping under the stars and just just because you could- when you're in your bivy, you feel like you've got your own little space, haven't you? Even though it's like point, I mean, you probably know the diameter, point sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of a mill of, of <laughs> yeah, nylon yeah, between you yeah, and really, nothing. Yeah, it's yeah. a really thin yeah. bit of material, but at least it sort of, it cuts out noise from behind. If you hear a rustle behind, you feel like you've, you've got your bivy behind you, but. He proved it when you could put it up for a night, you slept like, you just slept all night through. Yeah, it's yeah, the first so. night I slept all yeah. the way through. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not one of these people that like sleeping under the stars, like he loves it, but. I just, I just put just whack a brolly up quickly and it feels so much nicer but I, I heard like a, a wild boar or something behind me the first night um it sounded like it was knocking trees down it was that big like proper like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like proper rustling through the bushes and i was like fucking just sitting there like that i just remember waking up and you weren't where you went so i'm like what? <laughs> what that just mean? for the rest of the night like, i'm not i need to move from this box i'm obviously in its trail like you know? right so i moved and How uh yeah, I was going to say, what was I thinking? But obviously, you're just you thought we, we escape. I think <laughs> no. Actually, what happened is, is that I, I was so close to that we put the boats close together when we first got there, and I'd set up literally right oh, on the yeah. water, and it was so windy that the boats were rubbing together. Yes. And because it was the first night on the bank, I didn't have a bivy. I was like, it's weird, you know, like when you get like a weird sort of delusional sleep where you're sort of in and out of sleep, but the the noise of the the, the boats rubbing together was getting in my dream, and then it was like, oh, just like I was like, oh. So I picked up my bed chair because I had nothing else there. I picked up my bed chair and moved it slightly further into the grass. But it's there that the wild boar nearly got me. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> it was probably a baby, wasn't it? What's take on Honestly. Well, <laughs> now, it, it was, I'm telling you, it was a big wild boar. It was when and he it, set up main camp and put this mesh around him, like camo netting, and then a mosquito mesh, like... Like that, that was, was going to help him. <laughs> it made me feel better. It, well, it did. It did make yeah. me feel better. And the, the wild board didn't get me, did it? So maybe it worked. Yeah, or maybe they just weren't there in the first <laughs> place, which is far more likely. <laughs> what are your kind of, um, your lasting, the things you've taken away from the Salago shoot? What what were, the, uh, what were the highlights of that one for you? Big fish aside, let's say. Yeah. yeah. This big, is an big, obvious one. Big fish aside, it's the first time for a long time that we've been faced with something from a fishing point of view that we've never faced before. You know, we've, we've fished around the world a lot. So if someone says, or if we, when we're looking at venues, are oh, we go into a big, big venue, boats, we're like, right, so we do that, that, lovely. So to be faced with something completely new and I, I wouldn't say unexpected, we knew we were going to a beach area, but because we've not encountered it before, we weren't ready for that sort of carnage. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that away, utter carnage. Yeah, I, my, my favourite moments of them trips are always boating across the lake. I love being in that boat. It's such an it's like, it's like a feeling of freedom in it when you're cruising along mm. a massive lake on the and it's so beautiful there the, the water's gin clear beautiful surroundings I, m m like moving from the first swim where neil we just caught that 60 the pressure was off we felt like we got an amazing show packed up all of the stuff and got out of that first camp 
cruising along to that second thing, it was like, oh, just lovely feeling that was. Mm. So that was probably one of my best moments. Full pelt in a boat, still took an hour and 20 minutes, didn't it? Yeah, hour and 20 minutes so, to get to the other so swim, yeah. Level with me, Neil. The graphics would suggest that you were not very good. <laughs> I that, knew this would that, come up. You're not very good in a boat. Is that... <laughs> I think for the purposes of people listening to this, right? Mm. So, so there's, there are some graphics which show the geography of the lake and mm -hmm. how you guys are navigating the mm -hmm. lake. You do, uh, Tom's is more or less a straight line. You do mm -hmm. a, a various a selection of sort of um, that loop, the loop the loops and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. It's utter nonsense. It's not. It's, it's, it's it shit in a boat. It's it can't go around not, a straight line. He packs it weird. Right, like, I'll, he'll, I'll he'll hold put, my hands no, up. You, he puts all of the stuff on the front once. of the boat. No, 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 all of the time. Spain every, did it once. Every single time I, you I did I made it. a stupid ha, mistake of putting it, it, a spare in, leg. At, at, Salago, at Salago, your boat looked like shit. It had like all your pod hanging off of it, all of your stuff was on the thing. And no matter what happens, even if we're both at full pelt, you take longer to get to the second that one. That's, no, that was, every that was time. Spain. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how it's come about. Because Dovey can edit it more. He's no. like, ah, how can we stitch him I, up? I swear to you, I don't do that at all. It's Ross who's worse yeah, it is, me. Yeah, it, it is. He just finds it funny to stitch him up. But it, it, you are shitting about. In in terms of lo logistics, how do the how on earth do the crew get around these places? Do they have lots of? You've got how many boats? It, do you it, on depend, this? it depends on the on the venue. Let's like, let's take if you take Oriana, yeah. your only option is everyone is in a boat, and that's what made that arguably one of the hardest shoots we've ever had to do. Mm. In fact, it's probably no argument about it. it it's a almost a full day to move everyone from one swim to another. Obviously, it's a big lake. You're moving a long way, but it's not just our boats laden with kit just Kurt alone the stuff that he's got you know he's catering for mm. 15 blokes on the bank so he's a boatload on his own maybe more then you've got all the crew with all the camera equipment plus they're all they're all camping so it's all of their bivvies and bed chairs as well but yeah we, we, had, we, we had we had a, a guy out there called edwin that was looking after us shout out to edwin um and he had a bigger he had a bigger boat much bigger than ours, like a big metal boat with a proper Carpy ring. boats, then. They are, aren't they? They are. They're really lovely boats, actually. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't pick them, off subject a little bit, you wouldn't pick them to just put your rigs out. Like, if we were, if right. I was going on my own, I would have a much smaller boat. Yeah, half the size. But because we've got so much kit and we're there for so long, you need them. Because you can't really pivot very well on a spot. We've got smaller ones of them boats. They're so much better for putting your rig out on a smaller spot. But you've also got to take into consideration when we're going out in the boat to drop our rigs in, you need to often take a cameraman, a cameraman yeah. and a sound man sometimes. Mm. So you, you need, even you though need they're not space. ideal from a fishing point of view, they're imperative from a filming point of view. So is, speaking of the, the sound man, for instance, is there a moment on these shoots that you're not mic'd? Is it true actuality, as you, as you would call it? You're mic'd the whole time, or at least it's a facility to get a mic to we're you? We're mic'd the whole we're time. We're mic'd the whole right. time. We sleep in the mics. So just you, because yeah. you get we've we never we didn't use to to be fair we'd often have the mics on for a, a 12 hour day shift if you like and then we'd rely on a, a top mic mm. for night but the sound quality was never mm. brilliant when you're just relying on that so to make again you're looking for them little bits to try and make the show better sleeping the mic is, is now what we're, we're, we're turning the mic off at night though so we're getting you know you've just got like a little switch on it yeah so we're, we're, we're switching it off and then as we're getting a bite we're switching it on in our pocket Mm. which sometimes you forget to do but you manage to catch it on the top mic but generally we, we're good with it yeah yeah okay so well you know the, the Salago was was a wild adventure mm. right that that was key to the ethos of monster carp is that you're taking mm -hmm. people to these crazy locations show two parker del brand one of the most famous commercial lakes yeah in the world um talk to me about how that came about yeah, I mean that that's actually going to be show free when it goes out. Okay, they're 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 marked up wrong when when I send them to you. Yeah, so the first two will be, it'll be Salago, Oriana. Oriana. Oh wow, then, okay. then Italy. Well, let's park Parco. Okay, let's, let's talk <laughs> Oriana because that is a, a crazy moonscape of a lake. Yeah, mm. and you, and I think you mentioned it that some of the the drone stuff was just sick. It yeah, was it was really good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was it like shot. to be there? Um, Oriana, for yeah. Well, we went in October. We thought it was going to be. We we, we went later on in. Oh, is it November? I think it was late October. 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 We we picked October because we thought we'd get carpier conditions. You know, overcast, rainy winds, which is what you need for them big venues. Because you think it's so big, it's like nearly twenty thousand acres or something. I think Oriana, you need big winds to push them somewhere to you know to be on a big group of fish. I feel like when you're boating out 
initially it's flat calm Tom it's flat calm <laughs> yeah for it most was, of that, the trip that, that, that was the thing like we yeah. got there thinking it was going to be like that and it yeah. was like I haven't packed enough shorts and t-shirts I mean look at it <laughs> it was yeah. baking mate it was so hot we were just sitting there sweating the fish weren't grouped up anywhere apart from down a really shallow weedy end where you're not really allowed to fish um so we were sitting there wasting days away just yeah. and how much burning. of this yeah. this must have been a worry given your history with this yeah. venue mm. that, that all of a sudden it wasn't looking productive again we were yeah, sure yeah. that we were going to turn up we were going to be on fish and we didn't expect to catch hundreds far from it but we thought we'd get bit of consistency going and a big one would come along yeah it took once again it took a long time yeah, it took it for that to happen like literally the last night is when we started to get yeah. the big ones. Mm. um but yeah it was it was tough it was like it was being it was like being in the desert it was boiling hot there was it was it was look <laughs> really good scene again yeah. good scene <laughs> talk to me through talk me through the anatomy of this scene here what's going on well it was slow and we were trying to pass some time in like in t TV land, if you like, a chat to say what's going on, what are we going to do? And actually, it was so slow that we, we sat doing that and then then I got a bite on one yeah. of my rods, which was just funny that it happened. It turned out not to be a carp, but... um Another one of your pets, wasn't it? No, 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 that was a... a oh, a it was a bass angler. angler. Yeah. yeah. But um, so you get you obviously it was it was a setup scene, but, a, but actually something natural happened in For the, the end. For the guys who are listening to this, can you describe what what's happening here? I can't even remember what's happening there. We're just sitting there baking, running I out think of water. It, yeah, it was the same. <laughs> quite a cool sort of was. drone shot, sort of from above yeah. as well. It, it, and it looks like the moon. Yeah, doesn't it? I mean, like I said, it was so hot there. There's no shade at all. If you pick up some of these rocks around here, there's scorpions. And I was just going to say that Dummy doesn't do well with a money yeah. spider. Let alone, I had so a, many spiders. In, in, I was having to like clear my bivy out for, with twenty minutes, half hour before, so I knew I could not get you bitten by a few mozzies, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. actually but, amazing yeah. that you're an angler. Why? Because you're so scared of anything no, that I'm moves. No, I'm not. You are something I'm lands not. on you. No, I'm scared of things that can kill you. No, I don't I'll think get that's it with ridiculous. The I don't but then spiders ridiculous. couldn't kill you. Yes, they they just can. little spiders. Then wolf spiders will make you really ill. They will make you really ill. I lived in Spain. Did you kill them, Tom? Sorry. Did you kill the spiders? No. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't do that would i love nature I didn't let no i didn't I, did, I killed some of them that were too close to me yeah but no i try i, 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 pick Man, them up I mean, put them it, outside like we've all had insects drop onto our, us in in bed from yeah. the top of the bivy the whole new level of shit there isn't yeah, it? yeah you don't you, you don't want do you want a scorpion under your bed do you want a scorpion under your bed? No, no, I'm, I'm you, with you. You pretend on... to be hard, but no, you don't want... You I'm don't with want... you on a scorpion. Yeah, well, them, them we wolf saw, spiders are as dangerous as them scorpions. We saw one scorpions. scorpion as... No, they're not. Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, well, Yes, they are. Words. They are. The, the ones that were that sort of size with the dark I didn't legs. see a single spider I'd that size. No way. Yeah, with its legs What's out that, like just that. its body No, now, no, it? its legs like that. That's the size of a tangerine. For Absolute the, for those. nonsense. So, any... What, any what if, uh, ask, ask Lewis Porter. He, he what, had got what's it. the spider called? Wolf spider. I think they're called wolf spiders. Oh, wolf spider. If yeah. We, if we've got any so budding according... entomologists watching on YouTube, well, um, hit us up in the comments, which is more dangerous, well, scorpion is... or wolf spider? Well, yeah. I've just Googled it and Google said, wolf spiders don't pose a threat to people. It's possible to be. I think they're wolf not wolf spiders. spiders. <laughs> <laughs> something else. <laughs> something else. <laughs> well, they're black widows. Tell no, me Google that one. No, in Spain, they do, mate. Yeah, sure. They do. Is Google wrong? Is that what you're saying? No, I think you've got the wrong wolf spider. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> in Spain. I'll have a look. It's a fair point yeah. though, right? Because... You don't want to get bitten by something. I'd rather sleep without spiders in my bivy so I'd get rid of them. Is this this is the show with the with the the shot of the scorpion in it? I think yeah, yeah, that's real. So Isn't someone next found that. If you it was right one next to shoot, my bivy. Okay, out, just outside my bivy, there was a little. Um, I don't know what the word is for a group of rocks. There was a I'll do pile of rocks there, and <laughs> someone heard, heard. I think heard, heard a rock, heard, heard of rocks. Yeah. Joe, the sound went. Is that a scorpion there? I'm like, no, of course it's. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I I was a little bit freaked out by a scorpion. Yeah. There, there but, are things there that will sting you. But isn't this, isn't, the this the, isn't this the joy of it, though? The adventure. You guys have got to go through it so yeah. we can enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's fun, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be so jumpy at the best of times. You bring bugs into the equation. Did you go and look at the scorpion? Yeah, you, yeah. You summoned I, over. Do you know what? I'm less, I'm like snakes I'm fine with, which is weird. They must be out there as well, though. Yeah, right? it's like it's something that can just like, ooh, just like crawl, crawl, <laughs> crawl up. And you're like, ah, he looked what? at it through a set of binoculars from yeah. like 100 yards away. Right. Oh, yeah, it's there. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a, we, had, we had a snake in um, Hungary as well. Right. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That could have actually been venomous. That yeah, one. that was, was a viper or something. Viper of some viper sort, of yeah. Right. 
Yeah, so I, I actually cool. I actually run over it in a, in a, with, with a bike with a tank. No, with, with, no I, was, was... I was on a push bike riding around the lake. Yeah, and uh, well, you didn't notice it. No, no you... I was I was looking. I was either looking up or down, and I, I noticed it as I was just about to go over it. Luckily, it was a bike with like really soft suspension, so I just went straight over it, and it was okay. <laughs> now it was. I'm not. Even, it actually I'm not, was. I'm not was. joking. We moved it. It, 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 it was fine. fine. We moved it in it in it in it, away, in it, it moved <laughs> off, but it was like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you love that. You're, You're not going to do any favour with the conservationists watching, yeah. are you? No, 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 it was. It was luckily it was okay because I did feel really bad. I love snakes. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are lots of lots of bits and bobs that you see. But yeah, scorpions and spiders, uh, spiders, I don't want them in me, in me bivy. No. So what kind of, it, given this is November, are we talking like 30 degrees and stuff? Yeah, it was like 30 degrees. Yeah. All day? October. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, it yeah, was. All, all day and all night boiling hot. Yeah, <laughs> really hot. For two weeks, yeah. And and no sign of it. We, we had one night of good weather, and we caught like five that yep. night or something. Yeah, and that's so what you're like, after that that change in weather, or for it to be more consistent. So let's let's just cut cut to the beginning of Oriana here. To, to, for people who, who don't know anything about it, it has been out mm -hmm. there quite. It's been documented a fair yeah. bit recently, but perhaps people who don't know, talk to us a little bit about Oriana. It's in Spain for starters, yeah. Yeah, it's in Spain. It's a few hours from Madrid, is it? Two hours from Madrid. Yeah, I think it's nearly. Was it thirty-seven kilometers tip to tip or something? Yeah, I think. It's, it's, a, it's a big it, old it, bit of it's water. It's a massive valley lake, if you like, in the in the in the middle of mountains. Um, when it's full, I think it's almost twenty thousand acres mm. of water. Um, there's lots of carp in there, but they're very hard to track down, and they don't like noise either, which is a bit of a nightmare when you've got film crew and boats going in and out. Um, there's fish to like. 85 90 yeah, pound in there eight, i think yeah but they them real big ones are so few and far between there because it's really inundated with 20 pound commons 20 30 pound yeah. commons so you need to catch an awful lot of fish to get through to them real big ones and they only really get caught at certain times of year in certain swims as well um but it's an amazing place loads of really big commons in there the the biggest fish are actually mirrors which are like pretty special you can yeah, you, you can tell they're from oriana because they're so, such different looking fish I can imagine if you're holding one of them, that feels like you've won the lottery as far as uh, carp yeah, fishing goes, definitely. because it's um, they're so hard to get through to. But again, because it's so difficult, it's special when you get them. Mm. And how much were you reliant on local information there? Because obviously you, you weren't able to land in, on the fish initially either, particularly. No, we, we had we had really good information. The swim that we first got into, um, that actually done fish the week before, but the wind calmed down when we got there and they pushed off yeah. and, and we and we do like we said we we ask the locals information and we often get really good information but in oriana we actually had conflicting views all of the time which made it difficult to have that real clarity on what was going on um, and then you end up just making your sort of own decisions based on where you think the wind's going to go and the best information you've mm. got from from the guys that are giving it to you and it just comes back again to staying consistent in what you've done in the past yeah you know believing in the tactics that mm. you're deploying and mm -hmm. going with the, it the biggest thing on them waters is always depth of water right. and actually it's it's far more important even in uk lakes than people pay attention to i think um so you can be you can be on the fish on one of them big lakes and be two meters out and you catch nothing so you've really got to sort of hedge your bets as far as the depths go and when we got there they said 10 meters was the depth so you think, okay, we'll go a couple of rods at 10, we'll hedge it either side at maybe eight and maybe one at 11. Um, but it turned out like the best depth was between sort of three and six meters yeah. in the end. So that information can often be really handy, but it can often sort of steer you in the wrong direction sometimes. Mm. So you have got to keep your options open a little bit and, and, and try some bits and bobs. I mean, tactically, this is a world away from the sort of fishing that either of you guys have ever done growing up, or, you know. Yeah. You, it's fair to say, I think that were it not for monster carp, you're not going out to these huge waters around the country, no. around the world, at pioneering or anything like that. No. So, what have been the toughest things to learn? You know, I, I, you're using the, the fish finders. Um, I presume that's is, are they fish finders? Are they sort yeah. of sonar? What's the yeah? The yeah use, they are fish finders, but to be fair, they we use them more for yeah. uh, the, you know the depth. Did you find it easy an easy process to to learn to master? No, and I still don't think we have. We you, we, we we do or talking personally i think i do all right at it when i've been out to what, in the boat i'll leave it out <laughs> every time sure when i've been <laughs> ignoring for a bit i remember going out to when we've been out to south africa we've been out there for monster carp i've been out there a couple of other times visiting shops with some of the lads um 
and watching them boys use a fish find and using an echo it's just like we're we're scratching the surface with how we use yeah, it yeah we're, we're hitting the clip at 80 yards i think like, yeah that's what we're doing that's a great but way of putting it but the, the, them lads out there are so good at it. Yeah, they're 50 um, raps. They're, 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 yeah, they're hitting the, hitting the clip that far ahead. Five raps. They're that far ahead. Yeah, they're just so... Because it's much, all they know. They're fluent in the boat. Like when you when you see Damien in his boat, it's like it's a part... It's like us mm. with a spod rod. Mm. Yeah. You know, like you're doing it all of the time. So you just... Fit, it's like David Blaine with a pack of cards. They, 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 they know what they're doing in it. He can spin the boat around perfectly. He knows all of the spots. He's quickly flicking through his, his Ray Marine or whatever. Um, Holding himself in a... It's like gargantuan wind and he's just that, that's the thing is that the the the, the wind gets yeah. you you know and, and we are we are pretty decent at it now compared to normal english anglers we'll be we'll, we're like a long way advanced but compared to them boys we like we just i just, mean you only get to practice like once a year don't you or twice a year perhaps yeah this yeah, thing right. so it's, it's yeah. Sort of very intermittent just as you get towards to, the end of yeah. a trip you're doing all right yeah. and then it's another six months before you might do it again yeah no I've, i think you're better in it than you think when you first get there you remember we're doing it for two weeks as well yeah. so it's like they're, 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 you're four weeks of the year you're in a boat mm. that's quite that's quite yeah. a long time yeah is there a danger that you forget your the instinctive part of your fishing because you're watching on the screen and looking for depths and how how much does that come into play Oh, I think we're, uh, we're quite instinctive anglers. I think I think that that's that stays with you. You don't lose it. I uh, yeah, still one of my one of my I might have even been my first bite from Oriana came from you know you're, you're watching the depth, you're doing this, that, and the other. But I was up late, up early, saw an area where carp was showing, moved one of my rods and had a bite. So I think that that doesn't leave you. You know, the same rules apply, don't they? Yeah, it's just another tool you've got mm. in, in your armory. Yeah. Um, in terms of the Oriana shoot. When it was at its toughest, um, did you still believe that you could turn it, you could pull it round? You need that jeopardy in a shoot, don't you? Anyway, but yeah, I think I yeah I did yeah. Because Once we moved, I think we were better, weren't we? Yeah, it just felt it just felt different. Yeah, it did. Just, <laughs> our director always takes the piss out of us because we move somewhere, and the first thing we say on camera is it just feels different here every <laughs> single time we move. But it did feel different when we got to the new swim. The weather had changed. We sort of moved on the day that it changed. The wind was packing into a bay. It was slightly shallower water, and it felt much nicer there. I just remember going into that first night. We'd, we'd got the rods out, and Edwin had said, when the fish turn up, you know, you, that you hear them. And we'd barely heard a thing for five nights in the first swim. Mm. And it just got dark, and we heard one boom out, and then another. And then another, and you're like, this is it's gonna happen. Then you feel like it's gonna happen, yeah. yeah. But there, there are times when you think, oh god, this is not going. We were like four or five days in, and I'd caught one comment, like one little yeah, comment, and nine, yeah. And it was like, you know, we, is this lake gonna do it to us again? And even like, even at the end, like two nights before the end, when we'd we'd figured it out and we were catching some, I did think we're not gonna leave here without, yeah. you know, a, you know, a decent fish. But we did, we did in the end, and um, again, feels decent because it was tough. How isolated is, is Oriana when you're actually in position? Well isolated. I'm just yeah. wondering if you got a chance to try out your Spanish stuff. Because didn't you used to live in you lived in Spain? I, I lived in right? Spain about bloody hell, like fifteen years ago now. Mm. But yeah, I can I can still have a conversation yeah. with the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, the um, Gonzalo, who's one of our contacts there, he um, he's obviously Spanish, and and a few of the other lads are. So I did I did get to speak to him, have a conversation, but it's certainly not as good as it was. Right, in Spanish. And in terms of the camp, is it once again the crew are able to get away enough? Are they to to B and B or whatever? Whatever. No, no, no. They uh, all stayed. All of them stayed on the bank for the, the for the whole period. Oh <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it looked like Glastonbury. Yeah, <laughs> it really did. Yeah, it was, but because we had a a, um, a generator there as well, we made sure that the day crew were staying over a hill. Basically, they had the generator and um, they could get some proper sleep at night. So they could come back and be full of energy in the day, but it was it was it was like a lethargic. It was shoot. a hard. It was say, a hard for the, shoot for the guys, especially. Albeit he's super experienced. I don't know if Fordy was with you on that. Cr he's not he an angler. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Done more filming of carp fishing than probably most <clears throat> anyone. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but not an angler. And you're asking him to camp. Yeah, in what yeah. Must have been like a you know like a wild west. Yeah, kind yeah. Of, you know, skulls and bones or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 but he's been, Westerns filmed it. He, he's been there long enough to to know that what it's like and he and he signs up for it and enjoys it as well you know sometimes so sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes I mean the, he says it's all right i mean the staying on the bank like he sort of gets into yeah it, he does, he? He but, does. Um, it's just it, what i said earlier you know we've got absolute trojans that if it's if it's asked of them yeah is they just mm. go for it straight away don't they? you got to remember though these guys as well they're working on they're normally working on shoots with big corporations that are telling them what to do all of the time it's very corporate 
you know, do this, do that. And then they come on our shoot and it's like a bunch of lads having a laugh, really. We've, we've got structure and we get something mm. good out at the end of it, but they enjoy working on it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it for so long. So right. um, it's not that it's a good change for them. I, I really, part of me hopes that you get Kurt to rustle up some like, local cuisine on these. <laughs> Please tell me you did some paella or something. No, we, he didn't, did he? No, but we, we, we often we, get... He loves a bit of chorizo and stuff, Kurt. He, though, he does love a bit of chorizo. Yeah. We, we've, we've got... Um, we, we often get some, because it's just me and Neil as well, we get someone in from that country to play more of a part in the show. Yeah. So you, so the viewer gets more of an idea of how it feels to be there as well, to have somebody that's actually Spanish in the show or, mm. or you know, Italian, actually Italian Saturday, or whatever yeah. it is. So a couple of times them guys have cooked us some food and, and we sit down and eat that in the evening. Amazing. Fire, yeah. which, which seems important, right? Because we, as, as an industry, not as an industry, as a, as a you know, as fishing wider, mm you guys have it in your hands to show us in, in the very best light. And if that means showing a bit of culture and actually looking like you're interested in culture, yeah, then we need to do that, right? Yeah, a little bit. The hardest thing is, is, is getting the balance. So people are turning on to watch a fishing show and you can't have too much travel element in it because it's like, all right, get to the, get to the fishing lads. Yeah. We don't, we, 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 we don't want to have a walk around the city. So it's like, it's trying to, yeah find that balance having someone in from the area that brings in a bit of the culture maybe a little bit of the food and maybe something at the beginning of the show to just sort of stamp where you are um but apart from that we can't be in the beginning um with monster carp we used to do breakaway scenes but actually itv done sort of like a questionnaire poll of what bits people did and didn't like of the show and it was them bits that people said they'd rather not have him because they're tuning in to watch fishing so mm -hmm. we, we, we're, we're trying to put as much fishing as we possibly can but stamping where we are as well at the same time that that's a fair comment i mean you can't mm. you can't get better than that sort of feed. it's so rare to get the feedback mm. tom isn't it yeah right. what, what what sort of feedback do you guys get personally and, and how much store do you set by what people are telling you about what they like uh, and what they what, don't like um it's so the the night that a monster carp goes out, both of our social medias just go into to meltdown. At the end of the show, people tell us the bits they liked. Now, to be fair, that the, you don't get so much about what they don't like. It's it's just general, which is love a problem. For the show. Right? That, that is that is, you know, in a, in a way, yeah. You want to you, you you want constructive criticism absolutely as well. because you want to have a chance to you know if we we might feel we've got the absolute perfect recipe, but if no one tells us the bits that you know everyone might might really dislike something and not tell us mm. but uh, it, it, is a, it is a lot of love that we receive isn't it yeah you, you especially you everyone loves spoon doesn't they <laughs> it's good to have it around it brings it up a little bit no pe people are really positive with it i don't think um it's, there's not much to hate really unless you d dislike one of us two which is fair um mm. but generally it's two lads going fishing and and it's really well received so mm. it's not I, i've always not taken much notice of of comments from people um they don't really they don't know you and you mean I'm, nasty comments nasty comments yeah. yeah if there's anything if there's anything you don't agree with it's like oh okay well, it was fair i always think if there's like 100 people in a room 10 of them probably aren't going to like you maybe 30 won't like me and maybe five <laughs> won't like neil but but there's always that percentage and it that's um that's the, the, the same percentage stays online but if you just took note of the bad comments you'd end up shriveling away and yeah, doing you nothing would. you would so yeah you gotta i'll just ignore it all unfortunately some people just do just like to hate don't they yeah, yeah I mean, it's an easy way of doing it. If you're unhappy with your own life and you're sitting behind a keyboard and somebody's doing well, it's a, maybe it makes them feel better for a little while. Mm -hmm. I, th I think in, in a way, though, <clears throat> given as you're on telly with this, there's no comment section. You know, in, in, you know I'm sure you get mm. stuff on the, on the social stuff that Corder might put out. But um, personally, you could you could shut yourself off from that if you wanted to. If you wanted to. Yeah, but we live could. our life on social media now, yeah. don't we? It's kind mm. of an important part of it's like what what we do yeah isn't and it? all of the push of it is all on social media yeah. the clips of it will be the the pictures will be people commenting after the show so it is there is th there will be thousands and thousands of comments about this show whether you like it or not are you thicker skinned to both of you than you used to be or um or not? um yeah I, I think so I don't, I, I don't think either of us get too much negativity anyway um and even if i do i just try to kill them with kindness and just be nice about their horrible comment just, you just get them on to it. They like you in the end. I, I just, I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not that sort of person. Life's far too short. You look at all the people that are giving you positive comments. Um, there's clearly a lot more people that in, that enjoy anything that we produce than don't. And I think you just got to be, mm. you got to be happy in the fact that you can't I, please everyone. I, I really care about what the close people around me think of me, but not. I don't 
as I've got older, I care, I, I cared little anyway, but I care even less and less now about sort of the peripheral sort of people mm. that are not, that you don't know, that are not going to affect your life um, and that you don't, haven't got respect for yourself. I'm not going to, I wouldn't waste any time or energy worrying about them people. I, I guess, given as you're driving a TV show, it's important to re retain focus and, and that probably helps with that, mm. Tom, I guess, if you're not constantly thinking, what are people going to think of this? You're mm. just trying to make the best show you can, right? I think that's just in general, you should be like that. If you're worried about what people are thinking all the time, you end up not being you and then you're not being you, not being authentic and then everything goes wrong when you're doing yeah, that. Yeah, it breaks everything. down there on, doesn't it? It's like, you've got to just be you. You're, 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 you're right, you know? <laughs> no, it's true. It is true, isn't it? And, be, and the more authentic you are as well, the more people just warm to you mm. that's why people warm to neil so well because he's not he's he's a he's a dickhead on camera he's <laughs> a dickhead off camera it's no, solid no but yeah. it's true you are you're just authentic all the way through and sort of authenticity is cool isn't it it's nice to to be around someone or watch somebody that's like okay in their own skin happy happy with who they are and just have a bit of a laugh you can't hate on someone like that can you no um let's talk a little bit about legacy with this because obviously you guys are very much in the throes of, of making monster carp and you'll make more and mm. more do you consider where this where this sits within the, the the sort of genre of angling tv is it important to you would you like this to be to achieve wider things than than for Corda alone hmm. you I ask good I, questions yeah Rich. i don't i don't i don't think about no, it i don't I, I, I'm encouraging you to think about it now. Um, Would you like this to be? I mean, there, there must be some thought yeah, Dovey, about I, I, drawing I, people in who are I, interested. I, I, yeah, no, I do. I, I would love. I would love for it to go on a bigger platform of you know on ITV One, um, so more people get to watch it. Is that possible? Is that? But I, I still, it, it, it all comes down to it's still got to do good for fishing. That's that's the main thing. And the more people that watch it, the better. So yes, I would want it to do more but i wouldn't want it to i wouldn't want it to turn into a machine that's just like you end up losing the essence of the carp fishing we have less and less control over it and it turns into something that we're spending even more time doing and it's um servicing called a less and less it ultimately it is a branding exercise and i love doing it so much that i don't really want it to change mm. i don't want it to change but I, it would it would be good if it could stay the way it is, but more and more people see it. Would you worry that if it was commissioned by ITV One, for instance, they would have more to say about content and style? Yeah, I think if if ITV One commissioned it, it's because they enjoy it, and if they enjoy it, they would leave us yeah. to it. I think, um, but I don't know. The art is the no, answer. I, I'm it, not it sure. changes when it goes through different channels at ITV. Like ITV Four is factual entertainment, so I think we get a far bigger say. Mm. I think when it, if it did switch to their main channel um yeah i would assume they would have more of a say mm. as w right yeah said. I, I mean i don't have i don't have bigger aspirations than us being on tv for fishing if that's what you're getting at at all i don't know where I, I wouldn't want i wouldn't want i'd hate to be famous i wouldn't want it to be like a like a really big thing but i'd love it for it to be a, a, like an even bigger thing for carp fishing do, do you think the risk of you being famous weighed against the potential value of it to angling as a whole is is something that you're willing to consider mm. because ultimately yeah, because you've got, I, this is a big is, company it, that it, needs it to is finish. because I, I wouldn't say no i wouldn't say no now at all to the show getting bigger and bigger mm. you know and unless like we said we, it, it um it took the power away from us for it the show to be what yeah. it is but i i um yeah, but I mean, the, the reason we're doing it isn't to, isn't for it to become more than it is, which is a fishing yeah. show, or us become more than what no. we are, which is a couple of carp <clears throat> anglers. Mm. But I think, I mean, personally speaking, I think it does. The the ones I've seen, it it puts us in a in a good light, uh, and mm. that, that kind of camera. I think it's more important, if anything, that you guys and your relationship is developed on camera than yeah. than. Because the fishing then becomes quite normal in the yeah. background. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, some of the places you're taking us to, uh, they're almost like fantasy. Mm. It, it's it's not particularly, it's not always relatable, is it? It's not always something that I can go and do. No. But that doesn't matter, I don't think. No, I, I, I don't think so. I think that, you know, you're joining us on that adventure. That, that's why we, we try, we do have that, that mix of venues. 
you know, we go to venues that anyone could pick up the phone and, and have a go themselves. Yeah. And and ultimately, anyone can go to these venues we go to. But I think you need perhaps a lot more determination or you really have to set your mind to go to a Cassian, to go to a, an Oriana. You've really got to uh, realise what you're up against in doing so and, and almost come to the come to the conclusion that if you do one of these big adventures, you you might not catch anything. And that's the that's the that's the big thing for a lot of people. They're spending their that you spend their hard earned money, they're taking their holiday from work, they're going abroad because less everyone wants to catch a big one. So they go across the water to France, they might pick a commercial venue because it gives them the very best chance of catching a fifty pounder. And you can't fault anyone for I that. I, I think that's not I, I the, the more we do it as well now though, the more and the more other people are doing it. I really think that that's where the magic is really found. Like going to going to them big places and feeling like you're completely out of your depth and not knowing what you're doing. That's where you, that's where you feel something different about the carp fishing. I think it you is all, for us. You almost get that, you, you know, like um, in when you first start carp fishing, you get that feeling of not not knowing what's around the corner. But we've all done it so much now that you know what's around the corner. And you know if you're going to get a bite now. You know whether you should even bother going down the lake. It's like knowing all of the information has taken the magic out of it a little bit. And then when, when you when you go to somewhere where you're out of your depth, yeah, don't know whether you're going to get one, not sure where the fish are, you're not even sure if there's big fish in there, That's and then you go and catch one. That's ma that's magical. Is that more of a reflection on, on in a way, on you, Tom, that, that it takes a lot to get you out of bed these days? You yeah, a lot probably. to get you going? Probably, yeah. I've, we've done so much of it, Rich, yeah. haven't we? Um, I, I still really enjoy fishing syndicate lakes in the UK, but they have to be for really lovely fish. Um, and like I said, because you know, like when I was younger, I would sit for days and days and days on end in the snow trying to catch one. But now I'm like, I know I'm not going to get one in in them in them times. And I, now I can pick and I, I can pick and choose when mm. I feel like I should go. And I manage to maximise my time by doing that because of the information I know through experience. So I don't. Um, yeah, I don't feel the need to to go so much. I think I feel like you and Neil are probably a little bit different on this. I feel like yeah. you may not have fished too much without cameras last year, whereas I think Neil probably mm. did. Still, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, that, is that fair, Davy? Yeah, I still I still fish. I still do lots of my own fishing, but Neil does two nights a week every single week. Whereas I'll do like I'll do like three or four weeks of like two nights a week or on a lake to try and, and I do maximize that time and catch what I want to catch. Um, l last year particularly was weird for me because I'd blocked some time out in the autumn and then they didn't have any anyone to do a thinking tackle and I said, you can come along and film my own fishing. So then you do get to the end of the year and you think, I haven't been out on my own at all really. Fish, I fished the, lock, uh, the, the Lockwood at the beginning of the year and caught that, um, caught that comment out of there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I'm not as consistent with my own fishing as Neil is. Is it remotely a worry that this that the monster carp experience ruins fishing for you? Mm, no, it does take up a lot of time though. Mm. It does take up a lot of time yeah. when when you've got two. I've got two really young children, I've got three and one. There's no way I can go away for two weeks and come back and get my head into fishing like I would do like even just four years ago. I just can't do it. Whereas Neil's kids are older now, and and, and you can. I'll probably have a week at home after a long trip. But yeah. I will be out the following week. Well, this is a question that I've got. So let's explore this idea that you need people behind you that that uh, are on board with this because that isn't going to be every family scenario, no. is it? I, and I've said it a lot every time we, you know, I think on on another podcast I've done here. Without the backing that we both have from families behind, I mean, my missus is incredible. Of this year, this year alone, I've got a particularly busy fishing diary. Without even looking at Spooner's vlogs, I've got 16 weeks away from home with Monster Carp, with Masterclass, with sales seminars, with Thinking Tackle. You know, that's a, a third of the year away from home without, and that's without even trying to factor in any personal fishing. And as, as Dubby pointed out a second ago, I need my personal fix. I do need to go where I can just go fishing. It's a, it's a. I think it's a massive part of who I am. It's what I want to be doing. But without my, my wife and kids, um, as, as Tom said, my kids are a bit older now, so it is a bit easier. But my missus still takes on a hell of a lot when when, when we're away all the time. And obviously, yeah, the same. the same. 
but both we were into the fishing before we met both of our missus were we yeah, or you, yeah. Or you were. so yeah. they, especially mine anyway i was doing this job when i met lou so she understands that that's what i do as work so it was she knew what she was getting herself in for but she does she, she there's never a moan if i wanted to come back and go fishing i actually could um and she wouldn't say anything but deep down i know that really my kids are young they, they grow up so quickly and you, and you shouldn't be away all of the time and to be honest I, I want to spend that time with them now as well I've, like i said i've done so much of the fishing don't um i don't feel the need to squeeze that time in now when i've just got back from two weeks of fishing and 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 the and the, the the um filming itself now is so relaxed that you actually do feel like you're getting your fix from it it's not doesn't just feel like filming anymore i think that's touching back on venue choice we both before when it when it was going to be just me and Tom doing it, we both agreed that we wanted to be going to, we both wanted to be going to venues that we really wanted to be at. And that that's that's made a big difference mm. as well, isn't it? We're turning up to venues and we are buzzing when we get to add a special carp into our album from each of those venues. Um, and that has made a that's made a, a big difference, I think, to both of us. Neil, you fish, I've seen you fish some absolute puddles. <laughs> he still and does. been keen to get a fish in your album. Yeah, I, I I can't explain it. I, no. I consider myself fortunate in that a lot of people, I think, in my position that have you know been lucky enough to do what we do, catch the fish we catch. But if I'm then going down to do, a, a, I don't know, a feature tomorrow and I'm fishing an acre puddle and I catch a six pounder, when that Delkin goes, I am still going to be smiling from here to and I've, I've just genuinely got that buzz for fishing. Mm. Hopefully that, that stays forever. Does it increase your admiration for the lads who are staff members here you know you guys are at the very top of the business now lads who are working their way through Corda are putting in the effort that the same effort that you guys are on these shoots aren't they mm. their buy-in is oh yeah what the same or or yeah or what? yeah yeah yeah, 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 I, certainly. yeah. does that make it more impressive to you in, in a way that that that, that 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 the benefits to them are less immediate i would get I'm, I'm saying yeah i think um yeah and no because I was the same as well when you know I, I've been the same all the way through for I've been here 15 16 years or something now so um I understand I understand their position and I understand that that, that they get what a, what an opportunity this is to to work for a company like this we've just come back from um the summer party this weekend and it was like it was a bit of a moment it was like it was the most beautiful day mm. there was three 350 really happy people there a beautiful party that was all paid for dan stood up and done a speech and you know said what he you know what the, the values of the company and you looked around and you thought you, 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 nobody gets to work for companies like this they really don't so everyone appreciates their job and everyone works really really hard for it um and that runs all the way through the company and the people that don't work as hard as we do or the lads the, the film crew do they don't last here you know like you rich <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i mean you know we, we we don't we don't have people here that long if, if they're not pulling their weight then they're out you know um, and we've only got really good people working here right in terms of contrast parko i tried to pick up on it earlier it turns out it's actually show three yep it literally couldn't get more contrasting could it talk to me about what is the, you know the appeal of probably the most f famous commercial around or one of the, the appeal is yeah. the amount of massive fish in not very much water i, I don't I, what did he say fish of over 60 pounds do you think there was 60 or 60 70, or 70 copper yeah. over <laughs> I've 60 i've watched pounds. that bit so many times <laughs> 60 or 70 copper yeah 60 or 70 fish over 60 pounds mental ridiculous that's ridiculous and Surely that's why people go there Surely you're like hitting multiple fish on the drop, aren't you? <laughs> well, well he reckons right. there's three to four thousand carp. And in how there. big's the lake, Tom? Thirty acres ish, twenty five. Quite is it? big then. Twenty five to thirty 25 acres. 30. It's not, and it's, it's deep. You know, you've got an average depth of not that deep, really. Yeah. So, it's... hello. Nice Worth looking at it for its for the. Uh, that's how that's not. That. That's, that's not, not actually Euro part. That's Euro Aqua. That's Euro Aqua. Yeah. Great shot, though. <laughs> it looks really nonchalant. That fish. It's really nonch. Um, yeah. So. What were you expecting? You, yeah, you, had you guys fished? Well, I'd actually been there a couple of times before. I've done. Um, I first did when I was working out in Italy with the uh, Davide, the sales rep. Just dropped on there for a couple of overnighters and and um, did a dovey. Just caught catfish. <laughs> That's all I caught. Did you? Yeah, seriously. Nice. Yeah. You deserve that. Yeah. Um, and then I went back again for 
the European Sales Summit. That's where we film a thinking tackle with all of the guys from Europe. And I thought I was going to have the best trip of my life. I've got into a swim. Within four hours of being there, I'd had a 56 and a half PB common, followed by a 38 pound mirror, which I didn't even photograph the 38. So I'm like, ah, he's all right, but I'm going to get lovely loads more. Didn't have another bite. <laughs> a whole other <laughs> I hate week. It when that happens. Oh. I feel like I've got it sussed here. Yeah. No. But I've, I'd seen people fish it during that time. I, had, I knew a little bit of what to expect. I knew we'd get through a bit of bait. Um, I pretty much knew that I'd be fishing solid bags because it, uh, you talk to Antonio and that's what he recommends to a lot of people, accounts for a lot of the fish that get caught. So I had a really good idea of what we'd be doing. I'd booked a couple of brilliant swims, which uh, that time of year, you didn't need to make that look. Um, at that time of year, peg seven and nine command the deepest part of the lake and as it's getting cold that is where the fish group up mm. um so yeah we were assuming you were quite excited to be in those swims David. i couldn't wait he Rich. couldn't wait i'd couldn't big wait. it up to him how good it was going to be the week before like fish were getting caught out they'd already started to move in it's like there's no it's like we've got the swims like you don't want to be anywhere else for them swims maybe a couple of the swims in the middle but like we've got it sorted feeling pretty smug yeah like, great yeah. yeah and then we uh and, and just we, want to point out we've not we've not done anything that um he's not done us a favor no. by those swims you book your swim when you fish parko unless you've got a lake exclusive and you do a draw you you ring up and you say oh, i want to fish peg one at this time is it free so we'd booked seven and nine based on the knowledge i'd got from the place i knew that's where we needed to be so yeah we were buzzing for that weren't we yeah we yeah and then we got there we actually went out for like um we actually went out for drinks the first night when we got there because we wasn't filming um, that day wasn't filming that day when we first got there hmm. went out for a meal sitting in a bar having a few drinks with like half of the crew that were there already and uh we got a phone call from gary to say are you definitely you definitely are you definitely booked on to parko next week he's like yeah of course we are fucking, of course we're booked on there yeah, like, why'd you just, say that we've had it organized for months and he's like well because antonio who's the the lake owner said i've just spoke to him on the phone and he said that um you're not he, he's, he hasn't got his book in front of him but he's pretty sure that you're not meant to be here for another week. Who's that, Antonio? He's got, he's got, he's got, he's got, he's got <laughs> of course, he's got that wrong. He's like Italians. Dubby gives me his phone, and I've spoke to. And, no, but I, 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 he spoke to Gary, and I was like, "How sure are you that you've booked these dates right? It's the only fucking thing he done." That's a fair point. How sure? And he was like, "99.9 .9 percent." I was like, "That was not a hundred percent sure, is it?" And I know. Like, and I was like, "I will get my messages up," and I've, I've got my messages up, and I'm reading them. I'm like. Oh no. <laughs> and honestly, the world fell out of me. I could not believe I'd made such a ridiculous, ridiculous error. Not like you, to be fair, Neil, that kind of thing. I wouldn't. No, he can make no, these faces. This I is the know. kid that booked spring break when he was younger and turned up when spring break had finished. I so, didn't book it actually, my mates did. Yeah, sure. I just. Anyway. Up. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not the sort of which was worse, Tom. Uh, uh, this one because it wasn't costing ten grand a day. <laughs> I have got a nice. Um, I have got a nice little clip as well, Neil. Throw too much salt into the wound. Got... Had it all worked out absolutely perfectly. <laughs> some lovely food, some amazing drink, a romantic trip on a gondola through the streets of Venice. <laughs> I have to tell him I the dates up. <laughs> what does that mean? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Though, that he, his priorities are wrong. He's managed to get the dates right for the gondola. He's sort of the romantic evening out and everything like that in Italy. We go in there for fishing and he's got the dates wrong for the lake. Geezer does my head in. <laughs> We've all booked the trip for 12 people, load of camera crew and got the dates completely wrong. Have we? <laughs> <laughs> so the trip very quickly took a turn. To start with, genuinely, we didn't know if we could even fish the place. Antonio was called on the phone. He's like, don't worry. He said, because it was still sort of in that the, in the COVID time where lots of people weren't traveling, they might get a, a positive um, COVID test before going out there. He said, nearly every trip this year, some people just haven't turned up. So it, it'll be fine. So, of course, we've gone there the following day. We're waiting for everyone to turn up. Everyone's arrived that's booked on. So we're like, what, what does that mean, Antonio? He's like, oh, don't worry. He goes, there's, there's still, he doesn't sell every single swim, but 
You know what it's like. If ninety-five percent of the good swims are gone, you're left yeah, with the exactly. shit five percent. Is what that's what you've got. And you're that praying, you're praying, Neil, that, that that someone's not going to turn up, and then the worst happens, and they all do. Exactly. <laughs> Just thinking, oh, if someone doesn't turn up, it's going to be another good option. At the minute, we've got five or six swims that, at a different time of year, would be absolutely fine. But because we're coming into the winter, we essentially need to be as near to that deep end as humanly possible. And those options just weren't there, were they? No, no. So we 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 tried. There's one. There was one good ish swim that was sort of on the on the sort of outside of that middle part of the lake. It's still um, got to be fished well, which <laughs> which Neil got in um, after winning the coin flip. Did you know, Davy, that when you lost that, it would have a dramatic effect on what you were likely to catch? To be honest, the reason we stayed there. Well, because there were, there were a part of us to go right let's show like i said earlier that we've got really good contacts in sort of croatia that's all right it's not far from italy we we've got enough time we could travel for a day sort somewhere else out and go and fish somewhere with some with some good swims but there are 60 to 70 60 pounds in there there are thousands of carp in there loads of big ones and we thought we'll probably we'll, we'll, we'll manage to do like it you're not gonna blank we're not we're not <laughs> <laughs> not, not gonna not blank, gonna blank. I'm not gonna blank am i but actually now looking back on it, even though it was difficult, and uh, we, we ended up catching some lovely fish, but it made it really funny the show because of the disaster and how hard it was at times to try and succeed. But we did get there in the end, and we had a really good trip. So I'm glad we stayed there. T talk to us about how you, you know mentally you go from approaching these these big waters where literally you're 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 putting an, enough bait out to get a bite at a time to fishing a lake with four thousand carp in it. Yeah, that, that is our bread and butter, though, that sort mm. of fishing. We've done that loads of time. That is like spodding at 80 yards accurately with solid bags or with sticks or with Ronnie rigs or whatever. And obviously Neil used said, a bag. Obviously Neil used solid bags. Yeah, yeah. So you, we, we can go and do that anywhere and feel like we're going to... If, if we're going to compete, we'll, aren't we? We'll, we'll, we'll catch fish. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's literally... Th them shows, even, it was a little bit like that at um, Euracra as well. Really, they sort of feel like they're proper pressure off shows. It's so like we turn up, we know what we're going to do. As long as we uh, we turn up on the right week and we've got some decent swims, everything's going to be all right. It's going to be some easier, big, easier, big fish fishing. So one, we, we've got two really difficult shows, Salagu and Oriana. So we're just looking forward to having this like nice, easy week. And it turns out that that was ended up harder than it was at Salagu. Did did, did the unwittingly the the Neil's error lead to the a bit of jeopardy in that shoot that you would otherwise perhaps wouldn't have been able to get across to the to the viewer it yeah, would have been definitely. a procession potentially yeah yeah definitely well if we if we'd have been in seven and nine i don't know how many fish we would have caught and how do you <laughs> but it's right though isn't <laughs> it loads. there'd have been no we, jeopardy we would have caught loads. no that, like, we, the jeopardy is really good for the show there would there would have been there would have been something because he somebody would have caught a bigger fish and you would have made it happen on on at the yeah. time but nothing like it like nothing like it was and it does we, we've <laughs> We've now relaxed into the thought of the failure, so it's not there. There isn't the pressure there because we know it. That makes good, really, really good TV. So in the beginning, we wanted easy big fish and loads of them to show a bit of a smash up. You know, like catching loads of big fish. But actually, them shows are the most boring ones in the end. Absolutely. But you know, the hardened carp angler would like to see you catch loads of carp. But if you're talking about making a really good TV show with a strong narrative, you need some. You need some success on the edge of failure, which is what we had there. Yeah, it, yeah, sounds like a bit of a mantra, Dovey, that you've developed this success on the edge of failure. It is, there. no, it is because it, it it really is important. That's that's like anything that's really good that really gets you emotionally. It's when it's something that it's like something looking really bad, but you end up doing really well. And it's even all really good films are, are like that as well. And um, if you can manage to get that across in a fishing session, and that's what makes fishing so good as well, is that you don't know you're going to get one. And the pain is there until you get the bite, which is what makes the bite so good. So it, it is it is really important to have that narrative mm -hmm. in a fishing show. W was there an element of, because one of the, the themes of this show, really, it has to be said, is, is your struggle. Mm. Was there a moment when you thought, this is not how it's meant to be? This is really not how it's meant to be? Yeah. Really after the first night, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I didn't mind. It was funny. It, but, was, it was good. You know, it, it, I actually enjoyed the week and it, we were having a go at each other about it, but actually it was all in good humour, you know. So uh, I, I, I was annoyed that I wasn't sitting in that in that in peg seven catching those big ones, but it was also 
where you saw we got ev everyone was roped in into the end he was spreading rumors about me about how, how much i was blanking and all of the other lads <laughs> loved the it. great sequence yeah so how do you develop that because obviously that became the theme of the show in yeah. a way yeah but you didn't know you, you, you when you turned up that was that mm. wasn't scripted at all no not scripted how I, do you how do you develop that idea and get the camera how do you get people involved and well, that that was ross's i idea was gonna say again, I think the that's the, he, he's, he's so good of making something funny of what really yeah. is and yeah. and and, and, it's like, and that is that is the essence of commercial carp fishing as well. You know what it's like, matey next door is saying that he's not catching what, and and we we've, we've captured that really well, I think. And that whole scene about you walking around and spreading the rumours is just so <laughs> funny because it's that is what happens when when two of you are fishing together, and um, you've got a, a lake full of people that you end up knowing by the end of the week. It was just it's just really funny. One bit that I really liked about it, it's not 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 covered on camera at all. I was next to a few lads that had travelled from not far from where I live in Colchester. And after we'd set up and done the original stuff, we had a chat and he said, oh, what are you filming? I said, oh, it's for um, season seven of Monster Carp. And his first reactions were, can't be. I went, what do you mean? He went, well, you, you're just dropping into a couple of swims. And I said, yeah, well, we were meant to have seven and nine. He went, no, but I thought when you did Monster Carp, all the lakes were shut off for you. I went, no, this is what a lot of people believe because some, you know, someone starts that rumour. But when we come to a commercial venue, whether it's Gigantica, Crete Lakes, Parco, we're only ever moving in after, an, after the, the week before as anglers. And it really, it sort of blew his mind a little bit that he'd, he'd sort of fell into that trap of believing what he'd seen on social media that swims are roped off for weeks and, and baited up and we just turn up and start catching. So it was, it we was didn't even have any swim. We didn't have a swim. <laughs> Let alone one roped off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But Neil, it, you seamlessly got into the action, didn't you? It, you just flowed from the word go. Yeah, first night I found a, a nice little spot. It's all nice for Neil. <laughs> Had a bite on each rod for that first night. It was perfect. Well, Dovey was literally next door to me. Had nothing. <laughs> well, what, what actually happened was, it, it's not in the show, but we, we actually had a match at the beginning yeah. of, of the show um, to who got first choice of swim. It works out funnier in the show because it looks like Neil's taken me to a lake. He's booked the wrong week and he's given me the shit swim. But actually, he won that that the best swim, and it turned out that that was really the only good one. And then I had to move around amongst the other three or four shit ones that were left, you know. But well done for winning. They're the matches I like to win. Like when we do these competitions for swims, <laughs> when you win a fishing match against Dovey and Al, they were always the good ones. <laughs> yeah, they are. Got quite a good knack for that, to be fair. Yeah, you have. Got a nice little. The last going. three, I think you won. Yeah, maybe probably more. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, 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 you, you caught fish all the way through that, didn't you? I mean, you, how many did you actually catch in the end? He'll know as well, won't he? Yeah, Spooner, he's pretending on, that he's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. I he can't think... remember. I think thirteen. Oh, I don't think it's as many as that. How many did you catch? One. I think. Two, I think three, you had four. eight. Oh, no, eight? I think you had eight. I think I had ten. It weren't that much apart in the end. Oh, no, it's, a lot of mine didn't make the show though, because the back end ones. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, honestly, I'm yeah. not. I, I will have it written down somewhere. I think it's ten. Right. I think. Well, talk to me a bit about the uh, the atmosphere at Parco because you know most people won't have been. Um, I've certainly never been. What, what's it like to fish? It looked quite nice. It wasn't quite what I was expecting. I have seen the odd bit of footage from there before. It looked kind of. I, I'm, I'm honestly never the best person to ask for that sort of opinion because I'm boring and annoying in that I love everywhere I'm sat. Yeah. But when you are sat at Parco, um, I mean, I've been sending Dubby the odd picture recently because it's done an 80 pound common and an 80 pound mirror in the last couple of weeks. And it's the fact that you're sat there and you might catch a 12 pounder, but it might be 80 pound. Uh, uh, that that sort of buzz, that's that's what gives me the, the buzz from that sort of Hang venue. Hang on a minute, and you caught it wasn't Dovey on, on, on other species this, this time, was it? You caught an absolute creature, oh. which was quite hilarious as well. Oh, yeah. that was that, yeah. was that was a good, that, that was yeah. really. And, and it's, I've, I've got ridiculous. kind of a funny connection with that fish because that trip I told you about earlier where I blanked all week, yep. I think it was the Wednesday night. I've had this slow bite. This is on the, for the sales yes. seminar. I've had this slow bite. No night cameras, so I'm there on my own. I'm playing this thing in, and it is just plodding about, taking lines steadily, coming back. And after about 20 minutes, I'm like, this is it. I, this can be a massive common pop-up in a minute. I'd only said the day before that I'd love to catch one of the big sturgeons to get a nice photo of it. At 45 minutes, this sturgeon's popped up, and I was 
gutted and I've literally unhooked it and just let it go. Went And I went to bed, didn't even put the rod back out. And that's the same one I caught in the film in here. <laughs> and as soon as I picked up, as soon as I started playing it, I said to, I was pretty sure that it wasn't a carp. It was him. It, it was him. There's a few big ones, but he's got a little folded front fin. So it's when he went in the net, I'm like, mad looking creature. It's funny mad. when he cuts you on the show because he's just like, Woof, yeah, it's a big I mean, yellow thing. That inhaled your whole bag, didn't it? Oh it? yeah, the whole thing, every single morsel. But that, that's what they do. They just come in and literally hoover up. Would you have picked that up, Davy? That's a yeah. pretty crazy looking thing. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. I, I've, I've got, I caught sturgeon years ago. At, um, it's only catfish you hate, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. And, <laughs> I, I I don't like catfish because they're annoying because you want to catch the carp, but I don't dislike any of the fish. I don't like, but it, like if it's on for forty five minutes, it wipes all your other rods out, and that's just aggro in it when you're trying to catch. But the carp. Neil loves it though. You love redoing a rod anyway. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, don't mind getting especially them back a out. solid. Especially you know? I'd wiped out matey next door as well Did during you that fight. Yeah, it went round the bend, and he was probably dead to the world until that. Yeah, he was such a sound guy, honestly. We we got him really well. Wiped him out a couple of times, to be fair. But I think he had his own back. He got one of mine as well. It, it was just, it was it was one of them. You, the, the swims, the reason Antonio doesn't put every swim in every week is because it would be a bit tight. So mm. he, he sort of did us a favour. Mm. you got to remember as well, like, all of this is happening. He's catching like a 50-pound mirror, a big sturgeon. I'm just sitting there like, yeah. <laughs> in like a, a little corner. I get one bite and catch a weird little channel catfish this big again. So, uh, yeah. But how, in terms of the, the conversation between you guys, uh, the, the enjoyment you were taking in Dovey's struggle must have been tempered with the fact that you kind of wanted him to get there in the end. I, you... I, I needed him to get there. Mm. I needed him to start catching because it was my fault. The yeah. whole thing was down to me that he was having a rubbish trip. And as much as we <laughs> make a joke about it, it, genuinely, that's in the back of my mind. I'm, I'm catching fish and still having a, not a, I'm not having a good trip by Parco standards, but I'm still having a decent trip, getting some nice fish. And Do you know what I would have done if I, I if if you if you had messed up like that? <laughs> would you not have given me the good swim? Would you have gone, look, mate, hands up? It's my fault. You have you have the decent swim. I'll try and let it know. He's just going to pound you into the ground. Yeah, for a yeah, couple yeah. Of days. Like, oh yeah, look, <laughs> and your swim shit. Like, wait, wait, another one. Wait. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> just love catching carp. Now, I do, yeah. I can't help myself. <laughs> but, but Dovey, you turn it round. Um, yeah. Of course. How much of that was down to um, the fact you were willing to get on your toes? Yeah, every, not every, every, everything about it. it, Parker, it no, 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 no. I mean, because I, I had this choice of four swims, n none of them were that good. Um, <laughs> so I needed to, to try and see if any of them would do a fish at all. So I fished one swim for a night or two, and then I moved into another one for two nights, and then I moved into another one for a night and a half, I think. So we, no, maybe two nights again. It was um, your third swim that- It was a third swim that I ended up catching out of that was um, a really little little corner swim that the fish had pushed into because everywhere else was busy. And it's, it's actually the same with all of them commercials that no matter what swim you're in, you always get a chance in a week. You just do. Like every time I've done a week's fishing, there's always an opportunity to be had. Yeah, whilst it would have been boring, I think if you'd have sat in peg 10, you'd have caught out of there as well. Yeah, probably. But it would have been have. a different, it'd have had a different dynamic to the show then. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's made it, it made it better because you were moving around because it's something we don't often do. No, not that's as true. A, not as a single person. No, no not on a commercial lake. No, like no. You're, yeah, you're, sorry, you're walking I mean. around with your barra. It, it was just, um, just like any other fishing, mate. If you're, if you're not catching them and you're confident that you're doing the right thing, then move because you're not on the yeah. fish and it, it ended up we end up, well we actually ended up getting back into the swims that we had booked because we were there for longer than a week yeah the guys that had finished then it obviously then went into our week um so we did two nights or two a night nights. in their actual swims and then we started catching you know and you had a little glimpse of what could have been yeah but the, you got a better show that, because that, yeah the, again the, the show so i wouldn't change anything about that show it's that it might be my favorite show that just because it's funnier um but when you yeah when we got into the swims at the end it was like oh god we could have been we could have been sitting here for a week now doing this after the back of you know we would have turned up that, that the day we moved yeah. into the swim we would have been turning up and then going oh did you catch anything lads and they were like yeah we had like 50 fish up to 50 odd pound and da, 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 da. and we and they did while you were blanking yeah, while I was blanking over the other side, the guy that was in the swim that I was meant to be in was reeling in because he was so tired. <laughs> and, I, and it's in the show, you see, you yeah. see it when I yeah, speak, a guy called Alan, very funny guy actually, shout out Al. 
Um, and he was just like, he was hilarious about it because he knew the pain I was in because I wasn't on the fish. So he'd be like probably rubbing it in. He's like, yeah, I was having triple takes and I had another 40 there. And Gary had there. to save me at one Gary point. Gary had to save me at one point. I didn't have any nets left. And he's like, oh, I had to reel in for a few hours and get some sleep. It's like kit everywhere. And like, as you're speaking to him, fish are showing in the swim. So he's like, oh, for fuck's sake. Immediately relatable to everyone who's fished a day ticket though. Yeah, as that's well. what it's like. Yeah. Sometimes that, that you're off the, the fish, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. But that's, that's when you're saying that a lot of it's fantasy and people won't be able to relate to it. People can relate to that. It's you're. Parco is a commercial fishery and really it's the same same stuff in, in a different location yeah um and that, that people will be able to relate to it and find find that funny you know yeah no I, i'm sure it was a monster carp was it that, that we did at shumba when I, I think i was on that shoot yeah was that oh yeah early monster carp it was, was yeah yeah season um, two episode two one of the, you know you you've you have set your stall out there and since to fish for some of the biggest carp in the world mm. and, and obviously you did want to continue that theme in this yeah. series as well. Yeah. Parco is one. Talk to me about Euro Aqua because that is, you know, infamous. It has yeah. to be said. Yeah. But we've fished venues in the past that have held previous world records, but this is the first time we've sat at the venue that holds not only the current world record, but almost certainly the future world record as well. Um, Had either of you been there before? No. So what's no. it like to set foot on that lake? It was, do you know what? That's not a future world record, I don't no, think. No, it's a I good don't shot, think so either. Look at amazing that. Hang on, October, yeah. that was only born this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a different buzz driving into the gate. Yeah, honestly, there was. Because you, you, don't, you, don't, you just don't get to fish for fish that big. You Even growing up as a kid, you don't expect to ever be able to fish for a carp that size. Mm. Ridiculous. Like, they're, they're just... Well, they don't exist, do they? Well, they don't, well, they don't exist they anywhere else. No, there. They're, anywhere it's but just, there. It's just an anomaly, the place. And to be honest, my... Um, I thought I wasn't going to like it because it's not, not not like it. That's not fair. But I thought I was going to be less sort of um, enthusiastic about it than I was because I thought it was going to be an, another commercial fishery that we like similar to what we fished before. People say like it's like you've got you've got electric in your swims, Wi-Fi in your swims, cold drinks, and and and, and looking from the outside, not having been there, you think, you know, is this is this what carp fishing is now? Mm. And it's not you sort of feel like the magic isn't there for that sort of stuff. But actually, when you go there, it's a very different experience to, to yeah. what you think it's going to be. It was, it's beautifully pruned. The swims are all lovely and level. There is cold drinks in the swims, which is lovely when it's hot day. Yeah, Jackie, which is the, she's the daughter of the guy that runs it. She is so lovely, really accommodating, walking around, making sure everyone's okay. It's like you're properly on holiday. Hungary's gorgeous and for some reason always has beautiful weather at that time of year. When and, we there, Tom? Uh, May, beginning of yeah. May. The first two weeks of May are just so good for carp fishing in general and generally really So even weather. though it's probably a little hotter than here, they hadn't spawned and you were looking at genuine world records. Genuine right? records yeah. just before spawning, yeah. You, you're always rolling the dice a little bit with that time of the year because obviously mm. it's like if it's warm, they could start spawning, which is actually what happened when we were there. Oh, yeah, really? the, the, um, the Carasio and the Bream were spawning and we were then watching the carp coming in mm. and, and hoovering up the eggs. Yeah, so, but because the, because the fish are so big, it just adds something to it. And yeah. because the, the lake is so well run and it is so comfortable, it's like, well, it's just lovely. It's just lovely to be there. I mean, there's a, it kind of follows, doesn't it, that the, the world record venue should be at the pinnacle of something and it is for a certain type of fishing that mm. is probably the the pinnacle isn't it yeah you yeah. know with that kind of that bookable pristine mm. all things laid on yeah that, it's that, not that, for that, everybody but you know no. you've shown both sides in this series haven't you yeah I've, i think it's really important that we do do all of that sort of fishing and it's really important for us as well to go and do i i, I want to do all of the different types if we did four salagos within two seasons we'd be bored of that type of fishing you know so it's it is important to do lots of different types were you were you able to dream neil what it would be like to look down with the head torch on and see a fish like the, the very precious few people in the world have ever seen in their net. Certainly dreamed it. I mean, that's <laughs> about as close as I got. But when you, but when you, when you walked on that first yeah, night. Yeah, definitely. Well, to be, like the, the, the day that we got there, we were getting into our swims and the guys next door who had moved swims had a bite. Didn't think much of it, saw him land. It went to have a look. It was 80 pounds. So we'd, we're there, like not even thought about casting out. And there's a fish bigger than we've ever caught, bigger than monster carp's ever seen. And we're like, here we go. 
he's only had that rod out for about an hour and he's got an 80 pounder mm. so and, and, and they're jumping out and you see them it's yeah, ridiculous. yeah, you what, see. The big ones? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They can't jump. You know, I saw that really. Fucking hell. Yeah. Have you seen the sight? That it, was in that bay, like, wasn't it? Like that wide, you know, jumping out. In the what about hearing them, Dovey, at night? That must have been pretty yeah, it's, like free, it's, uh, it's similar to, one, I remember when I first joined the manor, in, like in Essex, uh, when I was a kid. And uh, when I first sat down there and they're showing out 30 yards out, it was like fridges falling in, you know? And that was the same as there. Like, that mm, was a big one. Just cars falling Yeah, just, in. just ridiculously big. So that that's... I, I think I've seen from Ben's post. Is that a forty pounder? He, he believes so. He thinks it was about <laughs> mid forty. Yeah. yeah. So they're they're twice that big, and they're clearing the water at yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah. 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 Well, well done to Ben as well. Amazing oh. job. How did he get it? How did he get well, it? Well, lots and lots and lots. He literally of time. sits there with lots his, of on a, Is it a monopod? Yep. Um, he's got an area that he's focused on, and he's just got his finger on the shutter. So when something shows in that zone, click, 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 and literally hope for the best. He'll watch for a long time and find a spot where they tend to show more. <laughs> a bit like fishing. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. Exactly the same. You're yeah. trying to catch a moment. Yeah, he's. Uh, that's just like it was. It was evenings and evenings on end, wasn't it? Oh he yeah, trying he to spent get a, hours trying lo- to get lots that of, shot. Lots of failed ones, but just by like a nanosecond yeah. or by you know a couple of foot. But um, we, we could is that weed that we can see in the back of that shot, Tom? No, 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 I, no, I think that's um, fluff. willow fluff. Yeah, yeah stuff, I think. Yeah. What 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 challenges does it present? The new Araco, like, what's the head of fish like? What did you think you were going to be doing? I that there was more small fish in there than I thought there was going that there was going to be, but that's because they stocked it in, in November, in, wasn't it? In November or December before we got there. And it's a running theme with the Hungarian lakes is that they stock them heavily all of the time. So if you time it wrong, you can get inundated with with smaller fish. Mm-hmm. But smaller fish there are like thirty pounds. Yeah. And if like we, we fished in Hungary before, but the small fish in the lake was six to fifteen pounds. Was this balaton? A balaton and yeah. what's the other one called? Uh, like Hatban as Hatban. well. Hatban. You can get away from them from like single figure carp. You can get away from with you know big mm-hmm. boilies or whatever. You can't get away from thirty pounders. At all. Yeah, it's a big carp. What? It's yeah, got a big it's just mouth, like if you it? put big boilies on, you still catch because it's still a big carp. So yeah. the, the the challenge, as with everywhere in Hungary, is getting through to the bigger fish, which is which is difficult, especially because we we. It turns out that we timed it wrong there. Normally they spawn at the end of May, beginning of June, so we would have been two or three weeks before that. But they had really hot, dry weather, and they were all grouping up to spawn by the end of our second week. So it was there was a little bit of that, you know, that odd period you get before yeah. they spawn and they you don't really Especially know. Especially the big females feel a little bit uncomfortable probably at that yep. period leading yeah. up. And we caught loads of fish, lots of males and some big fish as well, but not 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 big by Euro Aqua standards. Yeah. Still still very big carp. Tactically though, guys, what what we're talking, like how did you approach it? Um We we went there initially with an idea of making it big boilies only, mm. didn't we? We were gonna put in what did we take? 20s and 26 millers, I think. Yep. You know, beds of big boilies, big hook baits, so that we wanted to slow down the smaller fish as much as possible. And then when we got a bite, hope that we were getting a, a, a bigger average. But it, it, it didn't really work like that. I was, t- to begin with, couldn't couldn't buy a bite. <laughs> Duffy was, you caught the first night, didn't you? Mm. But it still wasn't, it wasn't prolific enough. So no. ironically, we ended up going... The other way, like well, we're not ca- we're not catching on mm. big boilies. Everyone else is putting in hundreds of kilos of particle um, and fishing little tiny hook baits. So we sort of, as we often do, l- learn on the job. And you know, you try things, you try to make things happen. And your your snag spot was the perfect example, wasn't mm. it? You'd had a big boilie sat in position for I'm not sure how long. Three days, I think it was. Yeah, nothing happened. The, the problem with, with with fishing them big boilies in is, or when you've got lots of fish that you don't want to catch in, like you never really know where you are with the bait in. So like if you put boilies out and you don't know whether that's all sitting there still two days later or because you're fishing an even bigger hook bait, they've eaten the free bait and all you're left is the hook bait. So you get two or three days in, you're like, well, let's just put some bait out so we can catch something and then we, at least we know where we are with the spot. So we ended up putting smaller bait out, some particle and some slightly smaller hook baits. I think I had like five or six bites that first day. Your yeah. first bite was within 15 minutes. Yeah. You've been soon, in the same soon, spot. As soon as I put them out. But then these were fish between sort of 15 and 40 pounds or 35 pounds or whatever off that snag. So it's like, right, okay, it's good that we get in action, but we've got to remember that that's not what we're here for. We're here to try and catch the big ones. So we end up going back to just fishing big boilies. 
Um, but we were still catching the 30, 30 pounders like that. Interesting pounders. that it ends up, Euro Aqua ends up being the most technical venue you fished, mm. like where you've yeah. actually had to yeah. change. Um, because perhaps, you know, naively, I would have thought that would have been laid on for you a bit more. You know, the fishing would have been laid on, but actually you've had to do some stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, you've, you've, you've got good anglers there all of the time. And no matter what level the fishing is, if you want to catch more than the people around you or catch them real big ones, you've got to be doing something different and better, haven't you? And you can only work that out whilst you're there. Mm. You can go with all of these ideas, but it, it all changes when you sit in your swim, you know. And in terms of the, the experience, uh, would, how would you sum it up, Neil, for people who may never go to Euro Aqua and the closest they get is watching you? What are the things that perhaps they wouldn't get from the from the show? Like, what's it like to be there? A bit like Dubby said when right at the start, um, that there is something electric in the air, and you know it took a while for me to get a bite. But when that buzzer went there, straight away you're just thinking, what if? You know they think there's probably ten fish over a hundred pound. That's just <laughs> it's ridiculous. ridiculous to say it out loud. But that's not you know forget how they they don't really know how many. 70s 80s and 90s there are so yeah they don't see them as big fish them 70s no. and 80s what no they so, don't they're tobe not. could you find us the world record do you think yes of course. from your aqua it'd be interesting just to, to i mean to remind us of the scale we're How talking many, about um um jackie's boyfriend has fished the lake a lot yeah. How many fish over 40 kilos had he had? How many different I fish? Know, lots. I think it was 44 fish over 40 kilos he's caught. Do you have to sort of suspend your disbelief when you're fishing somewhere like that? Because it's not relatable, uh, Not sorry, it's not similar to anything else, is yeah, it? Yeah, you, you do. You just have to accept that you're fishing a very, very special and unique venue. So I've just got the, uh, I've got it here. This is a world record carp stands at what do you think it is? Do you know what it is? I think it's a hundred and twelve pound fourteen ounces, roughly. Of it, don't you? You're, you're yes, do you want to put a picture? Oh, you wanted the picture? Yeah, if you can, Tobes. Yeah, that'd be great to see. Just to just to kind of so we can see what we're we're talking about here, because these things are different. I mean, I'll never fish. I don't think I'll ever fish for a fish of that size. I mean, they're they're built to a different scale. Surely, yeah. Everyone should go. You're in a position where you should you could go and experience it though. And I know Elliot probably wouldn't want to do it either, but. Uh, you should, it's go, worth you should go and do it. It's, it's it, brilliant. It's so different. I know it's not the type of fishing you'd want to do, but it is. There is. Well, this is. When, I'm, when you I'm pick open a rod up, you are sh you're shitting it, mate. Yeah. Because it's. And do you know the other thing you do is because you know there's such big fish in there, you convince yourself that you've got a real bigger on. Yeah. As soon as you pick, <laughs> as soon as you pick the rod up and it's not doing Flashes much, your you're mind. like, yeah, this is yeah. it. I'm going to be a world record holder. Here we go. <laughs> and it is because you. And then you're like, then you start playing it softer. Then it's not doing much because you're playing it softer. Then you can, and then you pop it up. It's like forty five pounds. You're like, oh, 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 it's not it. It's not it. I mean, you, it's not what you go for. But what about what about a world record on Monster Carp one day? You know. Well, that is what we went for. Yeah, <laughs> that we, is what we, we went to. there with. That was our ambition. We, we go, we're going back. We've go. we've 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 booked it. That's what I found. Look out. at that. <laughs> 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 that <laughs> what a ridiculous yeah. creature. <laughs> and that's one number that's a number of, there's a number of those yeah oh yeah there's like 10 fish over 100 pound and you can send you know like um well there's obviously pictures look of at that there. mouth <laughs> what a ridiculous Neil, that, you, that would suck up a whole bag wouldn't it Easily, yeah oh, right? look at i mean that bottom shot yeah. says it all <laughs> look at the width that's as wide as he is <laughs> yeah well, and what does that what does that feel like when you pick the foot up it's got a few, no, we don't know. We, well, Neil lost something that was outrageous. Outrageous. Like outrageous. Could not. There, there is catfish in there. Yeah. So we 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 had to put it down to that. They clearly weren't feeding that week though, Tom. Otherwise, you know, you'd have caught one. <laughs> yeah, What's that? Point. Catfish. catfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Can't have been a cat. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was. <laughs> that is a good point. I've never hooked anything like what right. I hooked on. But, but you wouldn't night. have. You wouldn't have. This is what I was saying. No, no, that's the, right. The, the guys there say that um, if like a hundred and twenty pound common, there's like um, there's there's another one in there that has that always gets lost. I know there's always that story, but you can sort of believe it there. And then when you look at that, you think if that doesn't want to come in, it's not going to come in, <laughs> is it? When you've got like three and a half pound Tesco rod and twelve pound yeah. line on or whatever, and he's hooked something that was like. Shit, this is actually different. It's just stripping it, just in the middle, just like back. Yeah, one, oh, okay. Back like stripping, yeah. like there was no keeping up with it. So we've had to, I was fishing off the back of this island and I actually got it away from the island and then it decided to go and it went and went. And I said to Dubby, I said, it's gone well past it. I said, now it's kiting right. And because we moved swims halfway through our trip, I knew that where it was kiting, it was heading towards a snag off the back of the island. 
And I said, we've got to go out in the boat. And there's other people on, you feel a bit guilty, but I physically couldn't stop whatever this was. And we've, we've got in the boat, gone around. Sure enough, it had gone in that snag and ended up, um, yeah, whatever it was. Do you think catfish would go into a snag like that? I don't know, mate. Not as much. I mean, you're the expert. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know. I just don't. I don't know. I, it, it looked like a catfish, but it could quite well not have been. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put it down to a catfish because mm -hmm. it was the speed and the power of which it was going. But I don't know because I've if you never ever played 120 pound common. Yeah, exactly. I, I've played four, I've played 40 pound commons that and you remember um, that Nala that I had in oh, um, yeah. thingy that it's big Croatia. long common that was like what 62 was it? Yeah, that felt like a catfish. It was yeah. just like you know that weird power that's like um you don't. You don't feel like it's like you really feel the speed picking up. It's just like slowly goes and goes off. This is catfish, but it's not. It turns out to be a big 60 pound common. Imagine one twice that size. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm... It could quite easily do what that fish done. Imagine that. I mean, you guys are clearly actually very enthused about uh, about the whole thing. Yeah. Would you go back? We are. We're going back. We've booked it again. <laughs> We've yeah. booked. Right. Can't. Yeah. Yeah, again, they only open for six months of the year, so it's not easy to get a book in. But we've booked on for autumn 24 so it's going to be a, a, another redemption tour and they'll probably be 150 pound by then <laughs> yeah probably probably 50 of them <laughs> they will be. but it's the it's the bait that goes and that's what i i was ready for a lot of bait but when you watch how some people and some people turned up at the start of the second week and because he'd fished it a lot it's a, it's a guy that i know from around this area straight away put out 100 kilos what 100 of kilos of hemp Two big blue barrels just, just out there for ages. Just. The, the, the problem is with them venues, though, at that time of year is that fish don't eat that much in the spring. They just don't. No. They're, 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 they're warming up. They're not, their digestive system isn't that great because it's still cool. They're coming to spawn in, but people still fish the same in the spring as people mm. are successful in the autumn. So then the springs, like they said the springs don't fish that well on there, but really the springs should be better than the autumn because they are in the UK, aren't they now? Yep. Um, but because so much bait goes in there, I think it kills it. I really do. Yeah, I think you're there's probably like right. There's spots going off, and there's just so it's inundated with bait. And why would they pick the one with a pick up the one with a hook on it when they've got like literally hundreds of kilos of, of bait out there all the time? Did, did the matey with the hundred kilo hemp catch? He hadn't by the time. Not over that area. By the time we left, we no, did like five three or four days for nothing. Yeah. Right, and you think that hemp they can pass pretty quick as well? Mm. Um, because I think we'd all heard, or certainly I had tales of like the bottom there being littered with maize but you don't know how much of that is is kind of hammed up a bit by people who aren't no, fans can, of your no I, I can imagine that happens mm. it only takes a week for them not to be on that spot and then it's littered with maize because they're putting out so much so is it, it's fed in the in the six months that it's not open it's they, yeah they do it? so that i think they open march april may and then shut for three months then open for three months um and because it's the the, the venue that's very much probably in charge of the world record now for some, you know. Yeah. It's going to be tough to, to wrestle that away from it now. It does see angling from all around the world, doesn't it, in terms of the carp anglers that go there from everywhere. Yeah, so the week they? before we were there, that Antonio from Parco was there, so right. Italians. We had some guys from the Netherlands there whilst we were there. English. English guys, obviously. Czech. Um, Check, check on the point yeah what, and what was the guy oh yeah italians whilst we were there as yeah. well um so yeah it, true it, multinational yeah, like definitely. fishing going on yeah that's crazy because they're all going to bring their own vibe aren't they from yeah. their own country mm -hmm. yeah what what kind of angling was going on when you were there obviously there's the one guy but what, what about around the lake were they were there differences in the approach and did, were they not, telling not, not differences re not not really. really couldn't see their rigs obviously but yeah. you know people were going out regularly in the boats to put a big hit of bait out and then um, casting over the top of so it. Do you think that they're trying to take the rigs out of the equation with that? I mean, were you doing anything different in to try and get when you when you weren't getting bites? No. It's, the thing is, which is which is the same, pretty much everywhere now, with, as far as commercial fisheries go, is that there are so many rules that you can't really do that much different. Mm. You have to be there at the right time, and you need to do what you're doing well. Whereas if you're only allowed to use a certain amount of baits. You're allowed to go out in the boat and put your bait out, so most people do. Um, did you? Yeah, we yeah. did, yeah. 
Um, there's a couple of spots that were fishing sort of in the edge that we that we ended up handballing it out, but it's just the same. If you'd cracked the spoms out, would people have been like, what the hell are these no, we, guys we doing? No, we did that. We, we did. We, we, we fished within our range so we could possibly top up the spots if we got it going, but it, it never really, really, no. really got going. So it was like a few bite, a few bites a day so you could go out in the boat and put the bait out. I think you hit the nail on the head though, Tom, when in that those people putting out massive hits of bait, often their bites they were getting were coming off like of the, the island rods yeah. or the odd rod with a bit of bait over. They weren't they weren't eating no. masses of bait. The, the only thing you can do is use better bait and apply it well, pretty much in them situations, I think. It's the same with most commercial fisheries yeah. in France as well. Really? Well, you can't... It's like if you go to a lake here that where there's no rules, you can try different things. You can try maggots, mm. casters, worms, and then that opens up a completely different style of fishing in different depths. Which you've both bottoms. done, haven't you, in recent years? Yeah, yeah lo lo of, loads lots. of it. And, and, and it's always an edge because people don't make the effort to do it. Um, and then when you're able to fish them sorts of, of, of uh, things on the venue, then en everyone ends up fishing that type of thing. Then it blows a little bit and then somebody starts fishing boily again and then he's the one that starts catching more. So it's like it, it, it sort of circulates around. Whereas if you take half of that armory away, all you can do is pretty much a handful of things, mm -hmm. and them things stay mediocre all the way through, which is I, I, that's which is why I don't like fishing venues really like tough. that. And actually, it turns out that my question about the the, the multinational nature of the venue means that it doesn't matter because you all no. end up fishing the same way. Yeah, you fish boilies and some particle at between eighty and a hundred yards. Um, and because it's, so, it's often repeat custom they're getting, isn't it? It's lots mm. of the same people going back. They've got lots of weeks booked, so they're turning up and fishing exactly the same every time. So no one's really doing a lot different to the man next door i imagine it costs a fortune this whole thing yeah you know, you're aqua just to go as a punter surely that, yeah that because they, they the reason you're paying the premium right yeah mm. because they're only open six months of the year they still want to make a why is that a year's worth of money um they want the fish to have a chance to not be fished for um so once they've spawned they like just give them that three months they, they'll obviously feed the lake uh to, to allow the fish to get what they need they're in unreal condition, the fish. Yeah. They're really they nice fish. Mint. The, the pictures that you see online don't do them justice. They're really lovely carp. They're great shape. They're not very dark because it's quite murky because obviously there's so many fish in there. Yeah. But they, they're, the strain of fish are lovely. They really are nice to look at. Um, yeah. I feel like those are different strain to, to what you what you find in the more natural lakes in Hungary. Uh, in, in Hungary sorry. Mm, I think they're quite similar. Really? I, I, yeah, I think so. Like they're, they're very similar to the big fish we caught, the bigger fish we caught out of Balaton. Um, and they buy them from the same places, you know. They obviously haven't got a sea there, have they? So they they put them into Balaton yeah. knowing that people are going to eat them. Um, and then uh, the, the guy that runs Euracra have got them from the same place, I think the original stock. Right. Mm. So, so this is a very successful type of mirror carp then, or mirror and common, I think. Yeah, and yeah. commons, yeah. yeah. He has got yeah. one 100 pound common that's that's been caught but there's the other the mythical one as well mm. so, that, but it's predominantly mirrors they've got great weather there as well to grow big fish They're, it's like it's a warm a lot of the year not yeah. too hot but warm enough for them to yeah. get eating early on in the year and spawn earlier and then have a whole year of eating and what was it like um during the shoot there because i, I kind of imagine that there's this food laid on and wine is available and you know beer and you know, it feels like a, a holiday. Mm. Oh, it, is, it is like a holiday. Was that, did that mean for the crew it was different or was it similar? I mean, we, we still got, um, we still had our, we still had Kurt there doing our food. Mm. Um, so we didn't, we didn't live the sort of experience that everyone else did on the lake because obviously we're, we're filming at the times when they're eating their dinner or whatever. So we can't live on somebody else's clock because it needs to be on ours because of the filming. So it, our experience was more like most of our other shoots than the guys that were actually fishing there but it is like that you've got a little like basically like a little restaurant you sort of bar there everyone reels in goes and has some drinks with the owner and has you can you can hear them all having a proper laugh in there it's like yeah. like a little community <laughs> isn't it? it's nice to have a shower on site That's I, can, like, on any Oriana, I can imagine yeah, on any commercials where you can nip up in the evening and have a nice it's no wonder you're in and out the water so much on those two big lakes because oh yeah presumably mm. like the only way to keep them clean <laughs> yeah yeah, um, guys, what what are the standout moments for you from this series? Neil, starting with you, I think. Um, it, it's cliche and it's the answer you expect, but but genuinely, that the carp that I caught from Salago is one of the very best carp I'll ever catch. Up it was, there with the Cassian, yeah, monster, definitely, yeah. because it was it was 
Damien thinks it's one of the 15 biggest fish in the lake. Now, it's not an understocked venue. There's lots of carp in there. So to somehow catch that one out of all of those that swim, a, a mega old 60-pound mirror from the most unique venue I've ever fished, that that has to be a hot. It has to be the highlight for me. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I can't say any other dif anything different than that though. It was good. like I said before. It was like it was the perfect fish out of the perfect lake at the perfect time because we were under pressure to make something happen. It was the first show without Al there, and we really, really wanted it to be successful. And then to pull that out of the bag is just ridiculous like 60 pounder at salaku just doesn't happen so for, for that moment itself was amazing but then it led on to the most beautiful lovely relaxed shoot after because it was uh, we loved salaku and then we ended up catching some more fish after that as well um so it just sort of led on to a lovely trip didn't it is there a really problem did. that you catch the bigger and early in a shoot yeah, I mean, we're well, not a problem, but you, you it's do It's nicer think, if it comes at the end, yeah, from, there was, from a story point of view. We could have finished the show there, really, and not have the second part in, but the second part is also so good that it's like, we're, we're not... we're not. That was when the real adventure sort of came in, wasn't it? Yeah, it's so good. Um, I liked Euracra as well, you know. I liked every bite at Euracra was a bit of a moment because of that, because of what we talked about. So many big fish in there, it's just exciting. Mm. And it's, it's the, did the crew pick up on that? Do you think there was a tension yeah. when you picked that yeah, the rod up that they so. were aware of? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially that first bite. I can remember. Well, obviously, it wasn't long ago, but yeah, just a few bleeps. Rod was bent round, and obviously, what he catches, he catches. But it was yeah. from the get go. It, it felt just it, it <laughs> just you, felt, felt different. different. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel that you now have a blueprint? to work from, from maybe from the Salagoo show is it the perfect monster carp Salagoo for instance I don't think you're going to get a perfect one because it's the fish, it's fishing isn't it it's different every time but as far as story goes well no 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 I think the perfect one actually was um, Carces the one the year, yes. year, year before because even though it, it all worked out in exactly the right order we caught the big fish right at the end um, but but yeah, salad was pretty good. <laughs> it's got, it, it, it had so much. It has so much in it. It had more than the car says, doesn't it? Because of all of the pain and the the funniness of the whole shoot. But um, I mean, yeah, the only way it could have been better if you called it at the last moment and not two thirds of the way through. But we're not going to be picky. <laughs> yeah, we'll take them when they turn up. No, what do you what do you hope? What are your hopes for the series? You know, what do you hope people get from this? I, I just want them to watch it and laugh and feel like they want to go and do it themselves because that is the point of the show mm -hmm. you just want anglers and non-anglers to watch it and think these boys are having a really good time them fish are gorgeous and the lakes look amazing i'd love to go and get a set of rods and go and do it or get my rods out and go and do it neil anything to add not really i think that's the ultimate the ultimate experience we can hope for to see that fishing it's not just a the perception that some people have is it's someone walking down a river and they you know they sit on their own all day and they're a little bit miserable it couldn't be further from the truth you go it's like any hobby that you do you go with a mate you have a wicked time you go home happy mm. yeah paint, can just it. paint a good picture of carp fishing because it is great isn't it it, it is great. It's, it's great it is great and, and i am i'm really looking forward to watching your Iraq, which is a show i haven't seen and perhaps yeah. <laughs> seeing the shows that I have seen in their final polished state, yeah. Yeah. which is going to be any day. So, yeah. you know, hopefully everyone out there enjoys them. They will. They will. Thanks, guys. Thank you very Thank much, you, Rich. Rich. It's good to have you on board. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Mike. <laughs> nice, nice to have you back, Mike. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> the Thinking Tackle Podcast.